Hello everyone, welcome back to Ask a Scientist Gaming, where we combine mediocre gameplay with expert science. I'm Ken Hansen, Associate Professor in the Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry at Florida State University. I'm a photochemist slash photophysicist. I use light to drive chemical processes or photocurrent generation or mechanical properties. Uh, but more importantly, joining me today is Dr. Brett Stout Willett. Brett, if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself. Hey everybody, it's good to meet you. I'm thrilled to be here, a uh, lifelong gamer, um, and currently an assistant professor in instructional systems and learning techniques technologies at Florida State University. Um, I like to tell people I study uh, how people figure stuff out after they leave the classroom, uh, after they walk out of our trainings, after they log off a webinar, um, and they have to go and figure out how to put stuff into practice. So I broadly, I, I talk about this as self-directed learning. Um, so a lot of my research covers social media, online spaces, online communities. Uh, yeah. And what do you typically yeah. teach? So I teach, uh, Hmm. I, every semester so far, I've taught a, a class in data analytics. So I uh, think a lot about web scraping and big data. And, and then um, today, earlier, I had class until about six today. And uh, we were talking about learning analytics. So we yeah, cool. talk about performance analytics, uh, web analytics, learning analytics. All right. Equally important. What game are we starting with? We are going to start with Portal 2 tonight. What Portal old 2. classic. Yes. Yeah. When did this come out? This was... There it is. Val. Oh. JX Big Power, welcome to the stream. Thank you for the follow. Thank you for the first time, Chad. It's a pleasure to have you here. We're going to let Brett settle, settle in a little bit, but we'll open to questions in no time. You can feel free to put your questions in chat, and I promise we will get to them. If not, remind us, and we'll get to them again. But you're playing Portal 2 for the first time in how long? Probably at least 10 years. No, <laughs> no, I played when my kids were little, so probably five years oh that's not bad we'll say five yeah well sometimes my answer is uh or guest answer is like 30 years <laughs> <laughs> so you're you're fairly recent and you're also a gamer i mean you still actively game yes and, yep uh, yeah play a lot of different things um but yeah you'll probably notice tonight i'll, I'll pause and just like stare at a wall because it's pretty <laughs> yeah <laughs> so i'm not necessarily the most competitive i but i i love games um yeah i've always loved games so you have to explain to the audience that's not familiar sure. what this is and why you're doing it. <laughs> yep. Okay, so uh, Portal, I, I like to describe as the physics game. So there are going to be all kinds of puzzles to solve. Right now, I'm, it's, I'm just a person, um, a woman, wandering around this weird abandoned laboratory, um, which is, you know, we don't know yet why it's a mess. But then there are going to be these funny buttons. And so we're like, hey, look, when I stand on this button, a door opens. But when I step off, it closes. So then you got to figure out how do I keep the door open? So fortunately, there's cubes and things like that all over the place. So you just drop them on the button, then walk through. But so that's the first puzzle <laughs> in this lovely game. And then it's just an endless game of, of puzzles. Um, but after every every level, you get in a cool little elevator. Um, you hear the announcers from this weird science lab that's now a ruin. Um, <laughs> Yeah, that's a good descriptor. <laughs> Arun is correct. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And anyway, you find out much later in the game, probably much longer than we have tonight. Um, <laughs> we will lose everybody if we play through this whole thing. Yeah. Yep. So we're on a new level. And again, in this game, we have no clue what's going on. Um, if you played Portal 1, you you, you saw the, the, the laboratory in its pristine condition. So I always like these signs. Um, so it's the little things, right? Like in this game, at the start of every level, they have the number, which is nice. And then they tell you what kinds of hazards you're going to hit. And so out of all these potential things that could kill you <laughs> in this nice science lab, the one that we have to worry about is a big box falling on our head. <laughs> so pretty simple. Yeah. Um, but yeah, watch out for the falling boxes, I suppose. Yeah. All right. First world problems. All right. So yeah, and then you're like, oh, wait, there's this funny thing on the wall. We should figure out how to get through there. Um, so let's see. What do we need to do? So probably let's go find our big cube. So let's open up a door. Oh, look. So then, okay. So the other, the other thing, the way the puzzle solving works is that there's a blue portal and an orange portal. You go in orange, you come out blue. You go in blue, come out orange. So that's basically all you need, need to know about the game. Uh, but with that, you can have some pretty wicked puzzles. So it's kind yeah. of fun. All right. So big red button. That tells me put the big cube on the big red button. <laughs> okay, so that the blue portal pretty much describes every level. <laughs> put yes. the cube on the button. Yep, and find then you're through. good. You're all good. Yeah, it's it's, it's a really fun right. first-person yep. problem-solving game. Okay, so then because we put that on there, then the the portal or the door to the end of the level opens. So then we just need to say, hey, 
Open that. The other thing is that there are these yellow lines, so that's also important throughout the game. You need to know, like, basically as you connect electrical circuits, so it's also really kind of about circuitry. Um, as you connect things, things light up, so you get a nice happy check mark, which again, super easy for right now, but then for later, there are going to be like four or five check marks that you have to make happy. And things that shoot at you. Yes. Yes. No, that's, yeah, that's some real fun. And then they complain when you mess with them. Uh, <laughs> They're like, why'd you hurt me? Those of you that haven't played this, the, uh, the, the computer has an attitude. Yeah, that's so great. It's yeah. got opinions. <laughs> All right, so Brett settled into a few levels. He's starting to play with yep. portals. Uh, now you're thinking with portals. Yeah, thinking uh, in portals. If, yep. if you guys have any questions for Brett, feel free to throw them in chat. Uh, he is happy to talk about anything. Learning technologies, networked learning online, how people learn after they've left the classroom uh, communities like Twitter and Twitch and um, I guess Reddit is one of the big yeah, ones I study a lot on Reddit and Twitter for sure so there's another little thing that I love about this game is just these little animations at the at the beginning of every level it's just <laughs> hilarious giant alien robot takes over <laughs> the UN and summit or something yeah it's if awesome. you guys like pop puzzles and haven't played this I strongly recommend it go like, on Steam you can buy both of them for like 10 bucks yeah, <laughs> yeah they're old enough now that yeah. Portal, portal when Portal Three, if Portal Three ever comes out, that's one of those I might like midnight purchase it just because I'd be so excited. Oh, yeah, there's we'll also do a graffiti. midnight stream. How about that? Yeah. Oh portal yeah, 3. I'll be there. I'll be there. <laughs> yeah. So there's always um, graffiti all over the place, uh, and some usually some stories behind the graffiti. But so I'll start with a question. So so sure. yeah, I'm yeah. I'm a chemist. Obviously, I don't work in your domain at all, other than I, I teach <laughs> and I play online in these environments, but not necessarily the research aspect. And one of the things I really like about this stream is, I mean, expertise so very different than mine. And so I guess I'll start with, you know, like, where does your data come from? Like, where does the information that you analyze, where, where do those <laughs> sets question. come from? Yeah, so I like to tell people that I either try and get all the data or um, a very, very small data set. So I'll either interview like five people mm -hmm. and ask them again, how they figure stuff out Some on their own time. Um, or I will get on, um, I'll get on a, a social media API and um, grab everything. So like I, I have like a 20 million tweet data set right now that's um, from EdChat, which is one of the, the oldest um, and largest teacher conversations, maybe anywhere, but, but definitely on Twitter. It's been going since 2009, October 2009. Um, no, 2008. It's like 14 years. Yeah, I'm about ready to write a paper or something like 14, 14 years, 140 characters at a time. Um, but yeah, 2008 to 2022. I mean, so um, what do you yeah. do with that? You're doing like network analysis, you're doing chat yep. bubbles. Like how do you, how do you process that? Yeah. So I, I do a little bit of a lot of things. I do some natural language processing to figure out content. Um, I'll, I'll do, I, I really love how people like figuring out how people interact or how ideas spread. So social network analysis is, is real big. Um, I will, Let's see. Oh, I like the music. Yeah, yes. no, the music. Um, <laughs> <is such. laughs> see, so look, we got an orange there, so we can safely drop down and get our cube. Um, so, yeah, so I'll do some natural language processing. I'll do some topic modeling. I've been known to um, uh, train a machine learning classifier, uh, that kind of thing. Um, I I tend to be really interested in how things change over time, so. Also, I hate these um, video cameras, so I like I always get rid of them. <laughs> my kid, my son is like, Dad, stop! They don't matter. <laughs> it does not matter. But like, matter I don't like to me. I don't like them watching me. <laughs> That's fair. Um, anyway, and also they get mad at you sometimes, and yeah. they talk to you about it. Um, yeah. So, so I do a lot of computational methods. Um, depending on what I'm doing, I'll also just take a random sample, and then you know you got to deal with the. Uh, the error, you know, error bars um, based on your sample, but mm -hmm. just depending, um, especially for like a first time looking at something, um, doing actually some hand coding uh, can be can be useful. Mm. All right, so we have two check boxes we got to do here. So we're going to need two companion cubes. So I mean, you have a paper on the way from this this massive data set of of tweets and educational content. Spoilers, do you want to give away any of your major, like, what, what do you observe out of that? Yeah, so um, in the early days for EdChat, it, it, was, uh, it was a more 
there's people putting out original content. I think they're really excited to talk to each other. Um, but then over time, people became much more self-promotional. So mm. uh, I'm really interested in that inflection point. Um, let's see, how do I do this? forget <laughs> let's see so i need to get over there do you, do you want backseat oh. driving from chat and or me oh. yeah you there want to troubleshoot no i i just yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I have a hard time thinking and <laughs> uh talking Jake, um Jake, yeah, so, so brett, I think, brett students are here for moral support so nice. you have the audience's support amazing <laughs> who, who's here the uh, jx big power i don't know who okay, that is okay. they, they'll stay nice. anonymous nice. love it um yeah the, the twisting around is sometimes a little nauseating yeah um but yeah so um so i i think what's particularly interesting about that is like when when the oh yeah more fun graffiti um when the community became a certain size it just got messy you know so yeah. like at one point i was like oh it became not good but then um, i've had people like well it just depends what you're trying to do so if you are a teacher who say made a resource and you're trying to promote it trying to get people to buy it on something like teachers pay teachers mm -hmm. then great ed chat's the space for you people will pay attention mm -hmm. um, there's a ton of retweeting there's way more retweeting now it might be a, like a two to one ratio oh, wow. of retweeting to original content Hmm. Uh, but if you're like one of the things I say is if you're a brand new teacher um, who's trying to figure stuff out, you have specific questions. Headshot's not the place to go. It's too big. Nobody's going to respond to you. Huh. Um, that's so, that's mm, present day. Yeah, or present early day, on. Yeah, you yeah, had early on. Yeah, it was, it was very much a community of people who were trying to figure out the profession. Yeah. Um, so do you have like a quantitative threshold when it made that transition? This was like thousands of people, tens of thousands. I think it was tens of thousands. Okay, yeah, was, and it's. I mean, it's just massive now, but man, that's like the transition between town and city, right? Like, yeah, yeah, that's a good way to put it. It's a community yeah. to a Let's see, which you have got to drop Hunhui in. and Jabe. Nice. Jabe. Yeah, they're two of my PhD students. Hey guys, <laughs> that's awesome. Thanks for coming. <laughs> That's amazing. Glad you're here. Thank you for joining us. If you guys have questions for Brett, now keep in mind, you're entirely anonymous. I won't tell well. him who gave this. <laughs> <laughs> but if you have questions for him, whether they be professional, scientific, personal, whatever it may be, feel free to ask them. Um, yeah, we're happy to answer them while you play some Portal. So I never played this single player. Is it is it different puzzles completely? Yes, it is actually, which is kind of fun. I might have yeah. to go back. And so uh, yeah, I mean, you get like two entirely different games. Mm -hmm. Um, all right, so now I need to like do some flying around based on, let's see, how high can I go? <laughs> yeah, uh, let's see. Normally there, okay, so there's gonna be stuff up there I need to get to. Man, I am, I am rusty. Okay, no worries. You just have to talk while doing it too. Yes, yeah, you have to talk and think and yeah, <laughs> it'll, it'll, no it'll give you a newfound appreciation for streamers. I know, it's least. amazing, yeah. And especially the high elite game players that do this. Okay. There we go. Like it's a, it's another level, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. Especially when they're yeah. I mean, anytime you can talk intelligently about anything. Yeah. All right. I mean, so going back to your data set, so the other yeah. option oh, yeah. was the, the mm -hmm. five-person like qualitative Q and A type scenario. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'll do some interviews. Um, this past spring, uh, because again, I'm interested in how people figure stuff out. Um, I was really curious how. Um, new teachers figure out because teaching is a pretty very tough profession. Uh, okay, I see. All right, so look, it's going to come out there and roll off. So I got to hit the button and then put that up as a backstop. I'm flying out of there. <laughs> oh, yep. man. Anyway, yeah, I vaguely remember these things. Oh. Um, but yeah, so, so I, I did a series of interviews and um, so I had five teachers, five brand new teachers um, who are very much still figuring out the profession um and i interviewed them and then um every other week and then in the intervening two weeks um they would fill out a diary for me and just talk about like here are questions i had today here's how i i went about solving them um i had a question i couldn't figure out i walked down the hall talked to a, a co-teacher got online looked at social media tried to find a resource mm -hmm. tried to get ideas for what to teach um and 
yeah, so again, five teachers. Uh, talked to them over the course of a couple months, just trying to get a sense of how some of their learning progressed during that first year and you know, and how they were figuring stuff out. And, um, yeah, so then I have just a massive data set of, of you know, qualitative data um, mm -hmm. from interviews and... Well, what level they were grade school? Um, they were, I think I had one elementary, two middle and two high school. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, so it was mostly, um, mostly interested in this is where it starts to get fun flying around. Um, yeah, so I was mostly interested in just the process of learning the profession. Mm -hmm. um, and, oh, they were all science teachers. That's the other thing. Oh, okay. Um, so that was the other way to narrow down. Let's see. Where's my cube? Oh, there it is. Oh, that's pretty fun. Any... I mean, the, the, the contrasting life experience of a kindergarten versus a high school teacher has to be dramatic. Oh, yes. In terms of their their learning process. So what's the starkest difference or the most notable thing you came across? Yeah. Um, well, I should also say I was talking to them in the spring, and so it was like testing season. <laughs> And, uh, and so um, a lot of it was like, what do I do with my students mm -hmm. while like half the class is in a different test and people are coming and going and finishing at different times. And of course that looks really different high school versus elementary school. Mm -hmm. um, and so, so yeah, just kind of, you know, again, like it's the kind of thing that people turn to social media for um, to figure out what do I do? I have 30 minutes I need to kill or um, how do I welcome students into the classroom after we're done with something, how do I, how do I do that? Um, and so just a lot of the activities, kind of the, the icebreakers, the internet is actually pretty good for that kind of stuff. Um, but for things like, you know, teaching somebody a new chemistry lesson, internet's less good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, the internet will say many things <laughs> in terms of the quality. It's so much very problematic. Dramatic. Yeah. So much <laughs> problematic stuff. Yep. All right. So yeah, we gotta, we gotta fall down here. Xiao is here. Oh, nice. More PhD students. My PhD students are the best. Represent. They're all showing up late at night. <laughs> uh, thanks, On a guys. Wednesday night. Yep. Drinking with all. us, no doubt. Yep. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Thank you all for joining us. Um, what are we drinking tonight? Oh, so this is Sensory Overload from Ology. So oh, Ology is probably my favorite brew pub here in Tallahassee. I uh, love the vibe. Actually, the the brewmaster lives around the corner from me, so that's kind of like extra yeah. bonus. Um, I say it was the best Halloween ever because um, the kids got candy and uh, they were <laughs> handing out beers. <laughs> so I was walking down the street drinking my beer. Um, they're where like, it was a very good Halloween. Like you again? Yes, <laughs> it's me again. We're back. We're back. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, <laughs> Shout out to Ology and the local breweries. Yeah, they're fantastic. And, and Ology has a really great selection of um, IPAs in general, but hazy IPAs especially, which I've been quite fond of recently. Um, all right, so we need to do a portal up here somewhere to land on there. So how about probably up there? Um, so yeah, so we, we're drinking, and this is Sensory Overload is kind of the classic ology hazy ipa they have it all the time it is the best <laughs> uh, all their seasonal stuff is good too but yeah ology is fantastic great vibe i, I always go to midtown because it's close to where i live mm. um and yeah it's just it's a really great like it has a really nice neighborhood feel i used to see people like i don't know i see people from my kids elementary school like other parents not not the kids but um see parents from the elementary school there and yeah it's just it's nice Feels like they're part of the neighborhood. Yeah. All right. That's so right. now we need to jump back over there. So anyway, working our way through. We're doing some puzzle solving, um, talking about stuff. Yeah, science. I was going to say, while, while conversing, <laughs> I'm impressed. It's, it's, coming, it's coming back to me. You know, I, I, even though it's getting more complicated, this is taking less cognitive uh, presence than like the, those first level or two. <laughs> no, I'm just like kind of getting in the zone. No, that's awesome. Yeah. That's the goal. Just relax and have fun with it. And yeah. occasionally get questions that are, yeah. are fun and interesting to answer. Yeah. So, um, I mean, going back to the data sets, kind of a, a cl this is a kind of a classic Brett story. So uh, I, I know for probably two years that like, really for a lot of web scraping stuff, Python is kind of the, the way to go. Mm -hmm. um, all of my practice and work that I've done primarily up to date has been R, which is 
fine for the most part. We should throw a prediction in there before you give away too much. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah I won't say anything about how I came to R, but, um, but yeah, but generally I do a lot of work in R. Mm. But last week, um, uh, Huni actually, who's, who's on the stream, had this great idea for, uh, f for a project. He's like, let's, let's see how people are talking about chat GPT. Cause that's the conversation everywhere. Let's see how people are talking about this uh -huh. on, on Reddit and particularly education related Reddits. Um, and so I was like, well, I want to get a whole bunch. I want to get a lot of data from a whole bunch of different education related subreddits. Mm. That's not really going to work, you know, with the li never, little bit that I can never, do in R. Never. I don't think that's going to work. Um, hmm. Trying to figure out. Okay, so I need to make something. So get ready to catch me. All right, on the off chance that I'm not dead. Wait a second. Maybe it's just maybe this is just a monologue. Anyway, um, so like, so I don't think that my current data collection methods using R are going to be sufficient to get. Like, I, I was interested in 25 different subreddits that were all education related. And I didn't think I didn't think R was going to cut it, so I'm like, a lot of data. Let me just teach myself Python. <laughs> so this isn't one of our one of our tri trivia questions, but if, if the question was, how long ago did Brett learn Python? It was last Monday night. <laughs> so I taught myself just enough Python to be dangerous and and learn how to use this wonderful package called Pra P R A W, which is sort of like the the standard if you want to collect massive amounts of Reddit data. Um, so I taught myself. Python last Monday and, and started messing around and was able to collect. So, still there? Yeah. Um, so I have a data set now of 25 subreddits, um, basically back to, I went all the way back to January, 2022, um, just to make sure I wasn't missing anything. But because chat GPT just came out in, I think November 30th was the official launch date. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the earliest post on any of the 25 subreddits was December 2nd. I think. So you're harvesting anything that has it in the title or it shows up in um, Anything in the title or body. Of the oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That, yeah. That's pretty and, awesome. and there weren't that many. I mean, you know, it feels like it's everywhere in, in education, but it's actually not as many. Oh, yeah. I have to pick this guy up. This is this guy's funny. If, play Portal 2. Listen to this guy. He's hilarious. <laughs> I think Futurology is where it ends up a lot, right? The people yep. discussing, you know, the... the eminent doom of humanity yep yep and one of the quick early findings was um that this has been way more of a thing in higher ed so like as you and i are hearing stuff it's because well our the professor subreddit the higher ed subreddit yeah. are all over the chat gpt um teachers um less so mm. but it's like five percent i think we found five percent of the our professors Professor subreddit is now ChatGPT. <laughs> wow. Um, it's like 1%. It's a decent number of posts, but it's only like 1% of the teachers yeah. subreddit. And, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. All right, we're going to throw up a prediction that's related to this in terms nice. of the learning programming languages. And so um, for those of you not familiar, on Twitch you can do predictions, which are basically, usually they're used to predict how games will go, whether somebody will win or lose or what might not. But here on Ask a Scientist Gaming, we actually ask science-related questions or questions about our guest. <laughs> And so Brett has come up with a bunch of questions that we'll be asking throughout the night. And we're going to throw our first one up there right now. And the question is, at what age did Brett learn to program in R? R, the statistical analysis <laughs> software, was he less than 22 or greater than 22? Younger or older than the age of 22? I'll give you a hint. He was not exactly 22 is the answer. Yeah. <laughs> but he's greater than or less <laughs> Spoiler than. Spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And if you guys haven't done this before, um, standard internet units, these are useful for everything outside the channel, but they are good for pride and voting on whether you get the answer right. If you're not following us, click the follow button. It'll give you 300 standard internet units. You can use them to buy things like request a factoid or make us take a drink. We're happy to do that as well. But look at the top of chat, click the predict button and put as many internet points towards each of the answers you want. Depending on how confident you are, you can bet one way or the other. Open set has redeemed take a drink. Cheers, open set. Thank Cheers. you as usual for joining us, Brett. Thank you for joining me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, Brett and I have never met before tonight, so I yeah. sent him a cold email. Do you want to drink, play video games, and talk science? He's like, hell yeah, no, and we made it happen. No hesitation. <laughs> yep. So cheers, open set. Hopefully you have a drink cheers. in hand as well. Uh, but yeah, the question is, at what age did Brett learn the programming language R? Um, usually I do a spiel about you're on Ask a Scientist Gaming Honor Code, but I don't think you're finding this on the internet unless you have a very detailed Wikipedia page. I don't think I have this on my website. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody can find it in under two minutes. You have earned it. 
My PhD students probably know. We'll see. We'll see how they do. Open set. So no, no pressure. Open set is drinking a uh, uh, sake mixed with uh, seltzer and citrus. Right on. Yeah, that's fun. That sounds good. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, you asked me my drink of choice, and <laughs> so it was either hazy IPAs or like a very expensive scotch. So I which, went with which it. scotch? Uh, so, I mean, my go-to is a log of woolen 16. Yeah, I'm not, it's, I don't uh, have that on the shelf. Yeah, it's you pretty solid. Yeah. Johnny Walker blue label. I could do that one. Okay. Yep. <laughs> That's yep. my go-to. Nice. Uh, the solid. Next blend. Yep. Uh, I got another one recently. I could bring it out actually, if you're interested in trying it. <laughs> sure. I, I organized a conference for the Inter-American Photochemical Society and I got a bottle of scotch as a reward. Oh, that's a so, great, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we can do some celebratory scotch. Nice. All awesome. right, so it's closed. Brett, what is the answer? Less than 22 or greater than 22? Greater than 22, a lot greater than 22. <laughs> a lot greater than 22. <laughs> yep. I think the answer you sent me is 36. 36, yep, I was in my first year of a PhD. That was the first time you had to do R. Well, and I didn't even have to. I chose to. <laughs> so again, my my interests are kind of like self-serving. The the how do people figure stuff out? Mm. Um, yeah, I, you know, and it was, I was I was doing research with some colleagues, and um, basically I had a data set that wouldn't open in Excel. Like it just crashed. Yeah. In my experience, Excel works to maybe the order of tens of thousands of rows, much bigger than that. I can't even get Excel to open. Mm -hmm. a file and so we were you know we were looking at some tweets and i think at that stage you know we were maybe looking at like a hundred thousand or two hundred thousand tweets but it's bigger than excel can handle mm -hmm. uh, my my uh, colleagues were, were looking at stuff and doing stuff and um I, I was curious so my advisor uh shared you know his his uh his script his r script with me um i promptly deleted it because it was on like Dropbox or something, yeah. so I like pulled it off and deleted it. And he's like, "Dude, you just delete it." Anyway, so he learned how to back up, and I learned, you know, not to delete stuff off Dropbox. <laughs> so lessons all around. Um, you say, does that answer my uh, what was the biggest mistake you've seen in lab? That, that was one of them. Mm -hmm. um, I have a worse one from last week, actually. <laughs> we'll dive into that later. Yeah. <laughs> That's brutal. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the, the programming. Uh, it's interesting. Interesting. So, so like when I started doing this test analysis, I had a friend that do, does that for like a living. That's his job. He does it for the formal testing companies. Nice. But when you look at like the accessibility of that software to your average educator, it is not great, no, right? Not R great and WinStep enough. and all those are yep. they're yep. bulky, clunky, hard to use. Uh, even installing them. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So like, oh yeah, we'll just use R and here, look, here's some easy code. It's like, that's after the hours it's going to take you <laughs> just to get it on your computer. It's like, but it's free. <laughs> yes, it is free. Once you figure it out. Yeah, no, it's awesome once the learning curve, but I mean, that's one of the things that fundamentally stopped me from doing that. Like now I get, you know, the discrimination in PDBSX, the, 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 the ability versus difficulty. Like I love the data, but it's hard, right? Yep. It's hard yep. to get it oh, out. It's so I've lost, I'm, or I'm not lost, invested so many hours of my life. Um, it's one of the most immersive things. I mean, as a gamer, gaming and programming. Mm. Single, the two single things that I can just spend, I could spend all day and not get bored. Like, you, you know, you just get in the zone and you're just like, I, let me try one more time. Let me try one more thing. Let me debug, you know, whether it's debugging or like trying to get by a boss. It's just, you know, it's a, that, that little thing of like that glimmer of hope. Like, I, I if I try it one more time. Yeah. <laughs> and then three hours later, <laughs> you're like, oh, huh. <laughs> I really should have gone to bed before I oh, tried that man. one more time. <laughs> and again, and, and that's true of programming and gaming for me. I mean, but then you find out it was something like it's interpreting spaces instead of tabs or some oh, stupid shit yeah, that was on control. Yeah. <laughs> it's always so so small and trivial and afterwards. So I feel like a lot of, and now as a, as a professor, I feel like part of my role is to train save my students a little bit of the pain that I went mm -hmm. through. You know, they're going to hit other barriers, but like... Maybe you don't make all the same mistakes yeah. that I did. Uh. So Samuel animates wants an, an, Samuel animates wants to know how do you keep up with new methods of text analysis? Ooh, um, I'm sure I <laughs> don't as well as it's I read should. It the <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, in, I mean, in general, you know, as I as I think of something that I want to do, generally I, I then go and try and figure out how do I do this. Mm -hmm. Um, so generally, I start with the, this is what I want. Um, I'll Google stuff, you know, and Google then takes you to Reddit or Stack Exchange. 
um, sometimes official forums. But usually it's it's the more informal. Ooh, we got the orange portal too. Yes, now we've arrived. Um, so yeah, it's it's starting with the question. For me, it's always about the question or the problem to solve, um, and then and then figuring out how to actually do it. So I've I've. I think for the most part, always manage to figure out <laughs> the way forward. Um, but yeah, but again, sometimes I lose days, like literally days of my life getting there. Um, so it's, yeah, it's definitely not linear, but, um, but again, it's, it's a little bit of that, that drive um, that makes me so interested in self-directed learning. Like, I know I can figure this out if I just keep trying, if I keep, yeah, just keep trying different things. And it's not bad. I mean, if you're a gamer, it's a similar thing. You know, it's like you can find it, like go, you know, you watch the YouTube videos, you, you look up, you read forums, you, you just try and try and try, you tweak little things, yep. and eventually you'll get there. Yeah. Um, but that's, yeah. So a similar skill set, actually. Oh, that's fun. Well, wait till you graduate your first generation of students and then your new generation has to go through their software. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be a oh, new man. problem set. And yeah, any, anyone who manages to find my GitHub, um, I apologize. Don't look at anything older than uh, a year, six months. <laughs> Last week. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, you did not link that in your About Us page. That's true. <laughs> yeah, it's, not, it's through my website. So if you go to my website, you guys I'll, can find it if you yeah. want it. So some of it's useful. Um, Most I'm putting, of it's yeah, not. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Anything that's older than a year, I, yeah, I make no promises. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, it's, it's fun you have like your own diary of your programming progress. It's true. Kind of oh, cool. it's at, oh man, yes. At some point, uh, at, yeah. So so when I was 36 in my first year of my PhD, I started to collect some tweets. Um, in, in my PhD program, we um, we were s responsible to do basically an independent project um, in your second year. And so when I was working on that, I was collecting, I think that was like a 1.2 million tweet. So that was my, my first big data set really. Um, and <laughs> uh, I mean, I was running like four loops and all, you know, anybody who's a CS guy out there, or person out there, like, you, you know, all the mistakes, my code was so slow. And so, you know, I'd like, I, I'd try and I'd get a bug, I'd try and fix it. It would take like five minutes to compile. Um, because <laughs> it's a big data set and everything takes forever. And then a year or two later, when I actually learned a little bit more, I went back, cleaned up some of that same code, get the same result. But I think I shaved something like 90% off my runtime. <laughs> it was like embarrassing. <laughs> Respect. I, I tweeted that and some CS professor found it and, and retweeted it and was like, See class, this is why you learn stuff before you do stuff. <laughs> which is sort of like the opposite of my ethos, which is like just try it, you'll figure it out on the way. I mean it's it's <laughs> it's the antithesis of the like generally accepted students have to wrestle it with their brain, yeah, right? You yeah. can't just get the answer. You have to do that struggle. It's part yeah, of the learning yeah, yeah. process. I, I believe in the struggle. So yeah, it's not efficient, but yeah, you know. I mean, it's, it's, okay. a, it's a long-term return on investment for sure. Exactly. exactly. All, right. All right. JX Big Power wants to know, tell us more about your experience in gaming and educational games. What game genre do you like best and why? So I think those are two separate questions. Oh, we'll man. start with game genre you like best recreationally Oops. and why. Uh, oh, okay. Sorry. Puzzle. <laughs> um, so personally, I think these days I'm on the... Oh, what do you call them? Um, survival games. Mm. So, like, I spent a good bit of the last year doing everything there is to do in Subnautica uh, <laughs> 2. That's fun. I did, yeah, the second Subnautica. Um, so, yeah, just, just kind of really enjoy the... the ex well, one, I love open worlds. love exploring. So, even in this, like, I'm, I'm playing a little bit more linearly because I'm not paying super close attention. Yeah. But if I was normally playing, like I'd be like watching every one of these videos a couple times through. I'd be exploring, <laughs> trying to find like, is there anywhere I can get stuck? Can I like yeah. jump off this edge? Um, and actually Portal has a decent number of like little side rooms with some very cool art and graffiti. Yeah. Um, so wandering does, you know, it's all reinforced. So um, so a game like this, like I, I'd be partly doing it for the puzzle solving and partly doing it for the, can I find something new? Yeah. So the anything that's open world is appealing open world self-paced um but then some of the survival games where you just like slowly build up so i guess it's it's open world and really it's uh it's a rpg mm. like the the leveling up um i mean even tonight like i mean some of the games all the games i've spent the most time in are things like elder scrolls online skyrim 
uh, No Man's Sky, the things I, you know, each of those I probably put hundreds of hours, you know, and it's not, I don't know, not quite the same as like jumping in in, in a stream. Yeah. Um, yeah. But no worries. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, but actually you, you're like, oh yeah, we could hook some of them. So like next time, if I, if I come back in like a year or something, like maybe I'll bring my PC, I'll just like unplug it and <laughs> <Let's do> it. <laughs> plug it I'll get in the monitor yeah. by all means. Yeah. Uh, actually it makes my life easier because yeah. I have to okay. track down. Uh, for those of you that can't see what we see in front of Brett, he's got <laughs> a mouse, a keyboard, a Nintendo controller, Nintendo 64, <laughs> Xbox One and Xbox 360 controllers. And it's running across two computers plus an Xbox. It's a so. really cool setup. <laughs> Yeah. So we troubleshoot. But if you bring your own computer, that makes my life easy for the most part. So let's do it. All right. The next time. Yeah. Cause then, then you get all the, you know, the three, 400 hours I've spent on no man's sky. Yeah. It's like walking around my bases. And, <laughs> but yeah, I just love building stuff over time and seeing uh, what happens. That's awesome. I'm all behind it. All right. So let's go back to that question. But in terms of like education, oh, like yeah, learning yeah. and like, what, what are your favorites for that? Yeah. I mean, player? honestly, portal two is a go-to and, and I thought it was a little bit funny. i mostly, I played it cause I thought it'd be pretty interesting to watch. Mm -hmm. But then as I thought about it, I'm like, well, it actually exhibits the self-directed learning thing that I'm all about. And, and even, you know, like to train, teach your students about, I mean, some of the, the puzzle, um, so like breaking a problem down into steps, you know, and with my kids, like I try and explain to them like, okay, so what's the next thing you know you have to do? And then what's after that? And it's basically building algorithms as you go. Um, and then uh, Ken, Ken was talking earlier about how he's played the co-op version primarily. And, and it's a similar thing. Um, I know there's a cube around here or something that I'm supposed to get, but I don't remember. <laughs> Too busy talking. Oh yeah, there we go. Um, this is kind of cool. It's like a refractor. Um, so yeah. So then the co-op, it's all about like communication. How do you, how do you communicate? Let's see, I need to get it there. Um, how do you work with a partner to communicate and, and explain and not get frustrated? Um, yeah, that's, it's pretty brilliant. <laughs> so, yeah, no. so yeah, portal portal is a really fantastic game actually for education. I mean, it, it, it's not just the, the education aspect, but how they, we, we skipped over a lot of the early stuff, but those of you that play this for the first time, it walks you through how to like do sure. everything. Yeah, like, and it does it yeah. in a really well, good way. And it's underappreciated when a game does that. Particularly, I don't know if you, how recently you played Super Mario Brothers or saw it, but like they designed it in I such a way it. that within <laughs> the first like six seconds of the game, you have to jump over a bad guy and accidentally hit something to release a mushroom. Nice. And so like it was all That's this awesome. information immediately embedded in your action and just it taught you right off the bat. And then it escalates difficulty from there. So some of the really early games were great at that. Nice. Hmm. I feel like I need another cube somewhere. I mean, so I've, I've seen this in chemistry as well, where people are trying to like even NSF grants to develop games to, you know, teach people. But very rarely do they go anywhere or hit big at all. And is that an intrinsic problem to trying to make games educational, or is that? Yeah, make, well, so actually, I <laughs> I don't know if he's going to be on tonight. I emailed uh, one of our PhD students uh, in, wait a second, where'd my cube go? Um, I moved it for some reason. Um, but yeah, I uh, was telling one of my PhD students to come, but uh, for his dissertation, he's like, oh yeah, I'm going to like design an educational game. I'm like, it takes so much work to make a good game. Like, like kind of an unbelievable amount, you know, yeah. um, this is going to be a speed thing <laughs> to be fair. He didn't <laughs> say he'd make a good game. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. That's true. Uh, but, but yeah, so I, you know, in his, in his prospectus defense, I'm like, like, Hey, just keep in mind, it is really hard. Like any kind of good game takes a huge team. It takes them a very long time. So like I, you know, again, I think he's probably going to do some really cool for his dissertation, yeah. um, but it's just it's it's a lot of work to figure out how to do it well. Science yep. Streams is developing a science ed game. That's nice. really fun. That's, that's, that's awesome. another streamer. Uh, I should probably yeah. link to them. That's awesome. Science Streams. Um, I don't have the automatic shout outs. I've not figured out Streamlabs well enough to do that. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, kudos to you again. I know how hard it is. So yeah. very much respect. Yeah. Check out um, but but yeah. So like even you know in my in my cert, uh, master certificate that I that I got related to serious games. Um, I mean, I really was I I was all about like let's figure out how to make commercial games useful. Like 
um, back then when I was doing all that 10 years ago, mm -hmm. um, it was kind of back in the StarCraft two days. And so then you get like all kinds of lessons about resource management, project management, order, um, all kinds of cool stuff. And, and so again, like you, you, you tell me the game and we could probably figure out an educational application. Yeah. Um, you know, again, like how, how do you, um, and you know, our program is basically instructional design. So we're all about like, how do we figure out, um, so do you know uh, Wally Boot in psychology? Have you ever met I him? No. So so he does he does gaming, but he's he's in particular studying like driving games for like elderly and cognitive nice. abilities and nice. stuff like that. And so I love he's, it. he's interested in, in that, that exact question, but for a very applied problem. Yeah. But well, I mean, you know, I tell people I learned how to drive in the snow from Mario Kart. <laughs> so if we if we play Mario Kart later, yeah. Um and, and do the power you know, slide. Yeah, and yep, yeah, yeah. Like it's you just kinda learn you got to go with it <laughs> well i mean one one of his things was there there's a certain like uncanny valley where it has to be a similar enough action to be of actual utility uh -huh. whereas if it's too detached it's not necessarily useful if that makes sense like yep. Yep. you can't totally. use a mouse to do surgery and then pick up a scalpel and do right. the same thing right. it yep. may tell you where to put stuff but like the dexterous skill is not there necessarily yeah and so there's this balance that uh, you have to really strike and educational games is Go. All right, so I'm gonna have to do something quickly <laughs> so that okay, I can get What do you need this. to do? I need to get the block up there. Is there a portal wall up there? Might. Oops. Ah, <laughs> that didn't seem good. I don't think you really have a health bar in this game. So I also could get in here, but I can't cut the portal off because then it's gonna take my stairs away. Mm. Oh, I know what I could do. Okay, so I could... All right, so how about I do an orange in there, so that way I can come out, press oh, the yeah. button, then I'll have a like timer. Sorry, this is taking a little bit more. Uh, no like worries. a fairly tricky one. It's yeah. it's where they give you a countdown and it like really gets you. Okay, so I'm gonna need to hit the button, drop through here, put the orange back over there, run up the steps. Probably like not very much time. So oh, then, that's fun. Tribal like, luminescence. Like, like, totally one of our colleagues from biology has a question. What makes a good game? <laughs> um, that is a billion dollar question. Oh my gosh, it's such a good question. <laughs> um, so there's this talk. Um, I don't know if we can link to show notes later, but um, Ian Bogos is a, is a game scholar. I don't know if you've ever come across his stuff, mm. but he has a talk Nick, called, it's called, it's called Fun. And I used to re require it when I taught more game related stuff. Um, and and basically his, his, his punchline is, um, Fun is in the eye of the beholder, so it really depends. Um, and and so I, I think I think it's similar. Like you know, if you're like, what makes the game good? I think it's what makes it fun. What makes it fun? It depends on what the person's looking looking for. Um, there's a guy named Jeff Vanderheed who gave a great talk at Game Developers Conference a decade ago, and it was about different the different personality types of gamers. Um, so again, do you want to? Um, so yeah, this, you found it. That's, that's the one. Fun. All right, that's I'll so link good. it for you guys. Yeah, literally 10 years ago, 2013. We'll watch right it here. after the stream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, it is a phenomenal talk, though. It's like probably one of the best academic talks I've ever seen. That's awesome. Um, but yeah, he talks about chocolate covered broccoli. He talks, yeah, you know. Uh, but basically, like, we're all motivated in different ways. And so um, it's a little bit like instructional design, like to give, give people multiple paths to do, you know, to explore, to do what they want to do. Um, but some people, it's about achievement. Some people, it's, it's about exploration. Some people, it's about pu puzzle solving. Um, so I, I think really, I mean, a great game is one that's going to let people be flexible and, and do the things that they want. It's um, let them understand ahead of time that, that they're, you know, the type of things that they're going to be doing. So like if Portal all of a sudden became a drastically different genre, I don't know, would I still think it's a good game? Because like, you know, if it, if it yeah. switches up on me uh, which is a little bit of what it's doing because like now i have to like actually think and not just like you know, <laughs> mindlessly talking about other stuff yeah um no, yeah. That's, that's what happened with uh, zelda and zelda 2 right yes everyone yeah. hated zelda 2 yep. for that reason like makes yeah it's mm -hmm. just just different and so it's funny it's little things you know and and i mean and so games one of the other reasons i like games is that they are at their core they're just systems and they're very ridiculously complex systems, like so complex that you can't really do the mathematical modeling 
um, you just have to try stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so in game development, like user testing is so key. Like you just have to let people try it, yep. see what they think. If they hate it, that's why games get patched so often. Because yep. um, people like are going to max min stuff to death. And then you got to like patch it because otherwise it be doesn't become fun anymore. Yeah. People don't have a chance, you know, like it becomes known. Um, and so it's the mystery. It's the yeah, yeah. Just trying new things. No, I, I totally agree. And so, are you familiar with speed running or you, you're familiar with it in general? I yeah, I, I absolutely understand. I, I haven't done it because, it, again, it's just like with different gamer personality types. It's not the kind of thing that yeah. appeals to me, but I absolutely get it. But it's just um, the art of yep. explo exploiting loopholes. Yep. And, yep. It's gaming the system. It's, yeah. it's like um, I feel like Bogos, maybe maybe he talks about this actually in this talk, but he talks yeah. about like the world record for the longest tennis match. Um, <laughs> and it's it's like. You know, basically, like, when whoever came up with tennis 100, 200 years ago, however old it is, they never imagined that somebody would be stuck playing this game for six hours or eight hours yeah. or whatever it was at Wimbledon this one time. Um, and, and yet, because, like, you have all these possibilities and you just never know how it's going to turn out, um, this, this kind of um, outlier set of, like, how you, you put together some simple rules, mm -hmm. so a scenario, you let people try it, and then you just never know how it's going to turn yeah. out. Um, and, and so anyway, so that's part of the, the fascinating thing. Like it's not a predetermined outcome. It's a kind of whatever you make of it, yeah. however you push the boundary. So yeah, nobody, when they made Mario, they didn't think like somebody's going to beat this in five minutes. What's your record? <laughs> Mine is five minutes, yeah. two seconds. Yeah, they never thought somebody's going to beat this in five minutes. <laughs> and I'm still you know? <laughs> seven seconds slower than the world record. Yeah, yeah. Like, that, you know, it's never, that, yeah. it's never they're like, oh, they're like nine again. levels. They're yeah. having many levels, you know, there's, yeah. there's never like somebody's going to do this whole game in five minutes. So anyway, so but those are the possibilities that are like really cool. What's right. up on the top platform? Is there anything up? Yeah, there? yeah. Sorry, I was like way getting yeah, away yeah, from no, talking. No, yep. So we need to get a cube those. up here there's and nothing, then get through there. No yeah. Up here. Um, yeah. So shoot into... we need. We'll have a delay. Yeah. But as soon as I uh, move the laser off of there, the stairs are going to go down. So we're not going to be able to get back up. So actually, can, is there anywhere that I can portal up there? Uh, then, can you shoot the floor up there? Oh yeah, that's yep. There we go. That's what we need to do. So we just need a portal coming out of the floor, and then we need a portal in here. No. Uh, let's just move this out of the way. Go. Yeah, we, okay, so we got while you're focusing there. on this, I'll briefly <laughs> rant about fun games and and the gaming game development communities right now are like let's push the graphics let's push the but they also release incomplete games as a result of yes like, yeah you see this rant true. all the time and it's like oh downloadable content you have to like you don't have to make the highest processing the most visually appealing like you just need it to be fun right yep. and like yep. at some point someone lost sight of that like yeah games and whatnot. it's so true and it's yeah and it doesn't take graphics like graphics are not what makes it fun like a little bit maybe yeah. but yeah, but it's not just graphics. Like you can have some of the most immersive games. Like mine, even Minecraft. Like yep. it's, it's not amazing. the graphics, but it is like it is so addictive. Yeah, it's another like you just lose forever. And I, I mean, even some of the more recent patches in Minecraft have started to add so many more features. But even like the basic original Minecraft is just so like because you could just build stuff and it's like so basic and because it's great. Yeah. I loved it. <laughs> what makes a game good? Yeah, that's a great it's question. Whatever's fun. Yeah, yep. it's whatever's fun to you. Yeah. yeah, and there's no, you know, there's no like this game is is better than that game or or whatever. Like it really is. Um, yeah, it's whatever works for you. <laughs> Ethan, welcome back to the stream. You can oxidize copper in Minecraft now. That's chemistry. Learning through it chemistry. Is. It is. Turn some brown green. <laughs> yeah, I haven't played Minecraft in a few years, but you can do a lot more stuff now oh, than man. you could back then. I, I never Minecraft, but I've seen enough YouTube videos about people generating calculators and it's, like it's <laughs> response systems. Yeah, but people build computers. You can oxidize it's, copper. I had a, a, my brother in law actually made, like, there's some uh, music blocks. And he programmed it so, like, when you open a door, it would play Beethoven's Fifth. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, there's just too much time. Oh, man. I, I thought I had this, and then we started talking again. Oh, well, I screwed it <laughs> up. <laughs> Let's give Brett some time to play video oh, games. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. No, it's just I got to get a portal over in there. It's just the order that I'm doing it, and blah, blah, blah. Okay. So, and that's fun. Are you yeah. familiar with Mario Maker on the Switch? 
I have not played it. I don't have a Switch, so like uh, I'm aware of the things on the like Switch. Like pe people can build their own yeah. levels, and you can play infinite number of levels. Oh, okay. Is this what I need to do? I just need to grab the block. Maybe I don't need that Switch at all. Oh, man. That... It's annoying. <laughs> <Too easy>. Okay. <laughs> anyway, so speaking of that's fine. trying stuff, this, this yeah. will be on YouTube forever. It's fun. <laughs> <laughs> There's a switch. I thought I needed to push the switch. No, I'm not no. judging. I no. honestly, I don't remember. So I, actually, I've never played this <laughs> version of it, so I have no idea. So there you go. How to mess with people's brains? Stick our switch in a corner yeah. that you can't get to. <laughs> but you get the most. And out then they spend game. 15 minutes trying to get to the switch Man. <laughs> while drinking beer yeah, and talking you, about science. <laughs> if you haven't, you should watch the speed run on this game it's ridiculous i haven't how, how long is it oh, i bet it's yeah. very quick oh, and it would just it. make me un, yeah well i mean at some point they figured out if you run backwards you run faster because it's not limited really? so like they turn around run backwards huh. portals through every wall that's amazing what's your guess on the total it's a lot of levels um i'm sure there's a wall 20 minutes I don't know, 10 minutes? It, I, it's hard for me to imagine. Single player mm, Portal 2 is 56 minutes. So okay, it's still okay. it's not completely broken. It's a big game. It really is. So, all right. No, yeah, that makes me feel a little better because I'm no, like, man, I have really slow at this game. They've broken Portal 1, though. I'm almost positive. I believe. Yeah, yeah. I believe it. Oh, look, that's what we look like. So it's kind of it's kind of fun, like one of those games. That okay. Can... No, this this is more like it. Portal One. What do you want to guess that time is? Three minutes. I don't know. Five minutes and fifty three <laughs> seconds. <laughs> it's such a good game. <laughs> they skip. And they just it. yeah they Clipping crank through, through it walls. so fast. Um, oh look at all this! Look at this art. All right, hold on. We got to go down and look at this. Sucker's luck, XL, too right. many variables. A anyone just joining us? So my guest today is Dr. Brett Stout Willett. <laughs> he is an expert in learning technologies and, and how people learn, how they use social networks to learn, learning beyond formal classroom settings. He's really studying things like Reddit and Twitter and social media and how we exchange information and learn. Um, good or bad, we learn things via <laughs> those mechanisms. And Brett is a person that studies those, particularly through processing big data sets, but also through individual interviews, learning from personal experiences, which is really fun. You get both both quantitative and qualitative, plus... Yep, it's either really big or really small. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I, I mix it up. Yeah, if you guys have any questions about that, he's also happy to talk about chat GPT. We promised to do that tonight. Yes, it yes, is we will get there. Everyone's mind. <laughs> Did you get that email about they're doing a special lecture on campus or something? No, I missed it. Oh. I saw our, um, who is it, chief information officer from something for the university, uh, created a, a Microsoft Teams group, and anyway, I got that email. I got invited. I don't know if everybody did, but I, I did. I don't remember seeing that. I don't, I don't, if if I got a special invitation, I'm not sure how. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, but yes, I got I got invited to this. All right, so and I should forward you it. Yeah, that'd be awesome. There's a guest speaker on the future of university writing. Nice. Oh yeah. Um, be, faculty who needs them. The art of teaching. <laughs> Yep, 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 yep. Um, Zoom meeting, who is presenting? We'll have a visiting speaker who is a specialty, specialist in GPT chat, or chat GPT, and its implications for university teaching. Oh, um, nice. Who is it? It is Michael Garn, Assistant Vice Chancellor for New Models of Learning in the University hmm. of Georgia. Okay, right on. For yeah, please, right that now. sounds really interesting. Most people emerge from suspension. Yeah, I'm going to go. I'm just, I'm curious, like, what it means to be an expert in chat GPT right now. Yeah. So I got invited. So I, I, my PhD is from Michigan State. I got invited to come back to Michigan State and give, um, be on a panel mm -hmm. of experts. <laughs> uh, <for laughs> Question you know, mark. Because basically, like, the College of Education, and it's just for the College of Education yeah. um, at, at Michigan State. Um, but they're, you know, basically everybody's trying to figure out, like, what do we do with this and what does it mean? And, um, you know, there's, there's a little bit of a debate on, like, who should be on the panel. Like, do they need an AI expert? Um, the, my colleagues and I who are, who are joining are really more, like, learning experts and instructional design experts. Um, but I'm like, I, I think that's what we need. I don't know that we need an expert in AI to talk about it. Like, cause you don't need to know the math behind it. Or, yeah, yeah. You know, how it actually it. works. Yeah, I think I think mostly we need to know about the implications and, we need, you know, people that understand learning and, and people and, 
you know, that Man, kind of thing. For things like that, I'd argue sci-fi writers are right yeah, more often than right experts on. are, right? Like they, they have the vision, like, what can it be, not what it is within our current framework of knowledge. Yeah, absolutely. So, no, that's yeah, so I, I, really yeah, fun. I love sci-fi. It's most of what I read. <laughs> yeah, that's my go-to. I bike and that's my audio book on the way every nice. time. <laughs> but see. anyway, it, it's, uh, speaking of our, and I mean, talking about your life experiences and whatnot, I think it's a good transition. We like to ask this of everyone, just basically the path that brought them here. And it's one of those, like, some people have this perception that academics were set out destined from birth to be these educators and researchers. And that is never <laughs> true. I don't think uh -huh. I've ever had a guest that had a linear pathway between start and end. Yeah. So what brought yeah. you to where you are playing That's, Ask a Scientist Gaming, talking science? That is a great question, which is really fun to think about, right? Because mm -hmm. like, yeah, this is not how I would have imagined life, but life is like, this is cool. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really glad to be sitting here right now. <laughs> so like life has worked out actually pretty decently well. Um, but yeah, so how did I get here? Um, let's see, I need to get through here. Um, so I took a long break um, after undergrad. I had 10 years basically before I started my master's degree what was your um, undergrad degree in? It was in math and sociology. Okay. And even that, actually, I mean, so I came in, I wanted to do math because I loved calculus in high school, um, thought I wanted to be a mathematician, uh, then decided I like people. <laughs> Not that those two are <laughs> opposed, I, I realize now, but 22-year-old me, 20-year-old yeah. me. Um, so like halfway through, I, and I, I, I just went fast. I went really quickly through um, all, all my... Uh, math requirements. So then my basically last year and a half, I had I had time. Um, and so I uh, picked up a sociology major just to mm -hmm. like learn about people and groups. And um, anyway, then I went and worked for 10 years. Um, and in that I was doing a lot of training, a lot of uh, public speaking and training. And I got tired of hearing myself talk. <laughs> um, and so let's see, I need to put it on. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, so I got tired of hearing myself talk. And so I, I thought, you know, there's got to be a better way uh, to to help people learn. And so that's when I went back. So I started with the, the uh, graduate certificate in serious game research and design. Um, just really interested in, in how do we design games for learning? How do we um, understand the learning that's happening in those spaces? Um, and so I started with the certificate. Um, basically, all the classes in that certificate counted for uh, the a master's degree in educational technology. Hmm. So then I, wait a second, what am I trying to do here? Um, um, so I went ahead and finished my master's in educational technology. Um, was at that point doing a lot with with the the video games and mm -hmm. um, some of the communities that grow up around gaming online I was really interested in that um, and uh, at the end of it at the end of the master's degree I felt like I'm not done I just felt like I was just getting started writing and, and, and reading and so I applied for the PhD also at Michigan State and um, just just kept going with the PhD and then just because of the research that I was around um, ended up getting into more social media stuff a little bit away from games for a while but but again kind of always interested in how people learn mm -hmm. um, and that's I mean that's where I continue I'm trying to get back into some of the more game related stuff like actually for research now it's really fun all right so I need to get over there get over there I mean so in that journey or the journey that's continuing do you have a like I made it moment I mean, getting hired is a non-trivial mm -hmm. one, that's mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. It's a big threshold. But do you have others that, anything that stands out to you? Hmm. That's a great question. I mean, the invited talk or invited panel at your alma mater, that's... That's true. That's, yeah. like, <laughs> that's no joke. I mean, yeah, like, and the education, education at Michigan... Oh. Well, now you see what it looks like to die. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that was an educational moment. Yeah, that was yeah, yeah, that was for yeah, the fans. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, no major consequences. Another great thing about games. No, no major consequences. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. Sorry. Right. So I need to not do that. 
I'm on the platform. Oh yeah, that's why I had the block to like block this so I don't die. I'll give you credit. There we go. Okay, look, I mostly was answering and yeah, yeah. Doing no, you're, you're doing um, awesome. Yeah, so I think getting invited back. Um, I mean, I've been hmm, mm -hmm, trying to think what else. Uh, I mean, one of the one of the greater privileges this year. So I'm I'm just in my second year at, at Florida State, um, but this year I I took over um, coordinating our PhD program. So even like with some of our amazing PhD students watching, yeah, um, like it's been such a privilege to. Um, I don't know, try and make the experience better for them. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, you know, we, we had a, a faculty who was transitioning, doing some like really cool stuff with NSF this year. And so we needed somebody to step up and, and I just felt like I, I was hearing the stories. I wanted to like try and fill in some of the gaps, you know, that, that we were aware of. And, um, I mean, it's been a lot of work, especially like in the fall, it was just everything was new. The first cycle through all the things. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it was, yeah, it was not a trivial thing, but but it just you know it just felt like such a privilege to so soon after finishing my own PhD to try and help other people um, really be attentive to how to make the experience better, um, kind of across the board. So, I mean, in some ways, like moving from my own PhD to um, the helping other people, um, I don't know. I feel like that's kind of a a, a making it moment. Yeah. yeah. No, it, you know, it's not that many years ago that I was like freaking out about my own dissertation and defense and all the things and now to yeah iui 98 thank you for the follow thank you for joining us for the stream makes me nervous when i see 98 because that's like is that the year you were born <laughs> i say this not even that young anymore <laughs> but but next that year be, when that's i teach grad student age now <laughs> ne next year when i teach general chemistry my yahoo mail account will be older than my students that's amazing. <laughs> is it <laughs> i mean you still have yahoo i, I had yahoo when i went to undergrad yeah. and then i i got rid of it <laughs> thanks so many I, so. <laughs> I had a student who i had a friend who made me a gmail yeah and it was at that moment sorry i so this is the kind of thing I do. I'm like, this is really fun to like get launched. <laughs> so I just go back and forth. Well, so my, my Yahoo account is my <laughs> yeah. default uh, spam account. So uh, like when you, okay, when you okay. get yep. Hilton Hotels yep. or whatever, yes. Yahoo or Hotmail yep. or AOL.com have a secondary. Uh, JX, big powers, redeemed, take a drink. Brett, cheers. Cheers. How are you doing on drink? Do you need more? Uh, it's low. but Should I grab the scotch? Uh, yeah, we, got, we got a few minutes. All right, we're an hour wish. in. Do you yep. want to keep playing this? Do you want to try something oh, else? What do you um, want to do? It's up to you. What do you What are you going to have fun doing? Let's see. Let's, let's do something a little different. The puzzles are starting to get a little bit harder. Um, I'm starting to pay a little bit less attention. <laughs> no worries. All honesty. Uh, so yeah, something. Should, let's switch it up. But yeah, I love Portal. Do, should we go to Paperboy? <laughs> Very contrasting experience. Yes, the complete opposite. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, that'd be great. I'm, I'm glad you said yes to that. <laughs> that's a great. Yeah. Oh, All right. Man. We are going back in time, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Paperboy was one of the first games I ever played. Um, and again, even, even with terrible graphics and like limited options of things you're able to do, um, my my sense of fun as a young child was let's see how many windows i can break all right uh, ladies and gentlemen we are jumping back to 1984 this game is called paperboy it is exactly what you think it is you are in fact a paperboy you are delivering papers to houses you have to deliver papers to the blue houses and not to the red houses and don't break windows yep or right. hit people do you want infinite papers infinite or maybe do a normal yeah, run and do then a normal. Infinite. oh so that sound. I got a little bit of credit because I hit the door. I missed the mailbox, but. And so basically you can't lose too many of your customers. Otherwise you lose the game. So you need to have as many of these white ones get their mail as possible or get their uh, newspapers. Otherwise they cancel their subscription. Exactly. All right, um, man, I should leave you with a question and then go. Oh. Do, 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 do. And don't crash into cars, man. Uh, basic. Uh, Riding a bike. <laughs> this is the hard part. I gotta ask a question I don't necessarily care if I hear the answer to. Uh oh. <laughs> uh, oh man, which question is that? Yeah, I know. That's that's hard. Oh man. I wanna know the answer to most of these. <laughs> I guess I can watch the YouTube video after the fact. Alright, let's let's go with this one, just in general, because this is and this is a I can get a, 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 a 
quick notes on this one afterward. But what is something okay. from your field that you wish everyone knew? Like there's, there's probably a lot of misconceptions about education, education, technology, good and bad. Wikipedia is evil. Like, uh, what, what is the, <laughs> what is the biggest misconception you would like to dispel in front of our literal dozens of viewers right now? <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what's your, what's your knowledge you want to drop? Um, right that's, that's a great question. Um, uh, so many, so many good ways to answer this. Um, I mean, I think, I think probably the perception especially after uh, the pandemic um is online learning any good can you can you learn things online um and and so i would say online learning is good um you can get a lot out of online learning i wish everybody knew that recognize that actually had experienced that um but online learning is different <laughs> so first of all online learning is different than learning in a classroom um, because it's primarily asynchronous it's not synchronous um, and online learning is not easier, um, to lead. It actually takes a ton of work to prepare, um, for, on, for an online class and oops, <laughs> I'm so bad at paper boy. Um, so yeah, online learning is, is, it can be good. It takes a lot of work and you should really not do it the same way that you do, uh, regular learning. So those, those, those things are probably, I wish everybody knew that. Um, and then there are all kinds of like myths, like all the, all the learning myths that, um, yeah, that you, that you get in the field, but yeah, um, we do a lot of online learning, uh, I'm trying to think if we we're going to ask this later, I think Ken might ask me later, so I'm going to, I'm going to hold off on that, but, um, but yeah, I, I've, I've taught both online and, and in person and in classrooms, um, I'm really having a good time. I'm teaching two, both, both my classes this semester are on campus and it's been a lot of fun. Um, and it, but it, it makes me appreciate just again, how different it is to plan and try and do them well. Wow. That was my best shot yet. Look at me. Um, <laughs> nice. And there's video record of it. <laughs> All right. Here's our, I've died like three times since you, uh, since oh, you no left. worries. <laughs> Just let me know if you want me to enable game G. Oh, Glenn there's Marenghi, there. that's awesome. That's really good stuff. All right, you're up for it? Yeah, that'd be uh, awesome. Let's do it. Yeah. So this is the 18 year. Oh, Glenn yeah. Basically, anything over 15 is like very high quality. So, yeah. This is totally this worth is organizing great. that conference. Yes. Yeah, this is a very nice gift. Rate, raise something on the order of like $35,000. Oh, wow, that's awesome. Where, where was it? It was in Destin, actually. Okay. So it's the Inter-American nice. Photochemical Society. So it's an international conference that we hold in Destin every year. So nice. it's really convenient. So, Well, if you need well, a guest speaker cheers. who knows nothing about chemistry, okay, <laughs> I will go to Destin well, for you. That's most of our guest speakers. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But usually we have experts. Oh, that is good. So the mark of a good scotch is the smoothness. Oh, yeah. So as opposed to like bourbon, which I love bourbon. Mm -hmm. It's a totally different beast, though. Different kind of kind of uh, drink scotch should be smooth smoky this is really nice yeah i really enjoyed this I'm, I'm, I'm glad i this is the first time i had it actually it was a uh, was like they were like what do you like to drink of oh, scotch whatever just yeah. surprise me i'll give it a try yeah, no scotch is a good choice yeah it's very solid uh, all right so what was the the short answer of what you want everyone to learn um online learning can be good <laughs> uh it takes a lot of work and it's really different. You shouldn't just try and replicate on campus classes online. Hmm. It's a different beast, but it still takes a ton of work to, to pull off well. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I, you know, go ahead. Is, is there a, is there like a, a definitive body of literature that's just there's agreed upon best best practices online versus yeah? I mean, most of the field of instructional design is is about online learning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, there's there's so much stuff to read. You, you know, if you if you look up anything related to instructional design. Um, so much good stuff. Um, I'd say, I mean, there's a lot of classic stuff. Uh, one of the models that I really like um, is the community of inquiry. Um, and, and it's a lot about like, uh, it emphasizes presence, like cognitive presence a lot. So there's the teacher presence matters, the, the, the learner presence, the social like interactions. Um, and so as opposed to just like getting your content online, which is, I think is 
you know, when you're doing something that's not actually good online teaching, um, but you know, like when, when we all adjusted <laughs> last minute during the pandemic, um, uh, that was, uh, people call that emergency remote teaching and, and, <laughs> you know, tried to make a big deal. Like this is not online learning. This is emergency remote teaching. <laughs> um, but wow, uh, gatekeeping online <laughs> learning, like what, what, what's the goal of that? Yes. Well, yeah. just because a lot of the stuff we did after the pandemic was bad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so oh, I think, I think it was more, yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, we all, we all know that what we did in 2020, spring 2020 was not good. Yeah. Um, but let's separate that out from like what we know and we, what we've studied for 30 years. Um, and so like the community inquiry is, is saying things like, um, you know, actually instructor presence really matters and social interactions really matter. Even if you're doing that primarily asynchronously. Um, and again, you, you need to plan it all out. You need to like help people really make sure they can make connections between why they're doing different activities. Um, you know, so nothing feels like, like in a class, people might be like, why are we doing this? Mm -hmm. You can answer them. But if it's an asynchronous class, you just have to, you know, over communicate, plan ahead, you know, just have a really clear plan for everything. And um, I mean, is there a general consensus synchronous versus asynchronous? I think, I think generally as a field, um, <laughs> instructional design is saying that, um, online, like good quality online, um, courses, ooh, that's a, my yeah, there's aggressive. Tonight. Yeah. Um, so, but, but good quality online classes should be asynchronous because it, again, it's just, it's not trying to replicate. Mm -hmm. Um, but if you do it asynchronously, like you've got to plan everything like down to, down to the T, yeah. um, get it ready ahead of time. I mean, so the plus side on that is you have to do that once and yes. as long as it goes well, yep. it's just, yep. And then it's there yeah. yep. and then you can focus all your energy on feedback. And again, so that instructor presence, you know, do that with really high quality feedback. Mm. Um, yeah, but yeah, you, you set it up. It's good. That's intriguing. Yeah. So, but, but, and, and I think the other thing is that I think a lot of people think like, oh, it's like easy. You get to work from home and you know, like whatever you just like put your slides on online and. Uh, oops, sorry about your window. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm out of paper. Uh, oh, nice. Uh, I'm going to lose all these customers, though, because I have no papers. I mean, oh, well. the dirty secret is you only need to keep one. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah, I nice. think I think you, you still win as long as you keep one. Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> we have not been using enough emotes, but that deserves a rage emote. <laughs> Oh, bad. Yeah. Oh, is, this, is this bringing yeah. it back to you? This is <laughs> yes. peak my, childhood this is like, here. Yeah, man. How old was I? It's probably six? I don't know. I was not very old when I was playing this game. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so good. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> no, That's but awesome. yeah, the, the online learning thing is interesting. And I mean, you get such varied results. Most of my PhD was online, actually. Mm. Um, and people always ask me like, how, you know, how was it? Um, and, and I like to say like, it was good enough. I did that last time. I should have chosen a different path. <laughs> so, for those of you watching this, like the, the directionality of this, if you ever played marble madness, it's like, is it actually 45 degrees or is it like 30 degrees? It's, it's a weird, yeah, oh, man. it's messy. Yep. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. I mean, so in terms of the engagement, I had to do that. I had to go online, you know, spur of the moment, but I also right. had a streaming setup, right? And so right. basically right. what I did is I took my PowerPoints from class and I overlaid my head on them. <laughs> yep, which is great. Yeah. Again, cognitive, you know, the, the instructor presence, like they're, they're getting to see you at least. It, it is. <laughs> Matt isn't a robot. This is isometric hell. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Our geometry brains are screaming. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> no, this yeah. is. Yeah, we, yeah, we won't play this one quite as long as uh, oh, yeah. Portal. This is not. But if, if you think of any Nintendo world. games you want to bust out right now. Did you ever have Tiger Heli? Yes. Yes. That I, was the other one that we played. Wait, there's a. I don't remember a hurricane. What? Or a tornado. That's new. I, I have that game <laughs> on the shelf behind us, actually. Nice. Yes, let's do Tiger Heli. I remember that game. I remember nothing about it or any strategies, but I remember playing Tiger Heli as a child. All right. And then, uh, I mean, the original Legend of Zelda. These three games, Paperboy, Legend of Zelda, and Tiger Heli. That's like probably the first 10 years of my life. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Tiger is ready when you are. Okay. Awesome. That's Let amazing. me know when you want to do it. Well, after this life, bro. Yeah, yeah. This is my last life. It's, uh... Oh, man. 
So yeah, Ask a Scientist Gaming. This is not just for the audience. We love you guys showing up and asking questions, but also the guests get to relive their childhood. Yes, it's great. Oh genuine gosh, joy no. in their eyes. Oh, that was a close one. <laughs> How did the Tornado Slash 720 skater or the bees get in here? <laughs> yes, no, that is... Uh, oh, Do you yep. remember this from your Paperboy days? <laughs> I don't remember the Tornado. <laughs> the Paperboy calls it quits. Brett also calls it quits. Are you ready to do some Tiger Hilly? Yeah, let's let's do let's do uh, let's switch it up. So many good games. Do you want do you want cheat codes on this one? Uh sure. I've never done cheat codes on this. This will be fun. All right. Awesome. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, there's a possum sitting outside our door. <laughs> Debbie just came in to tell us. It's just hanging out on our porch. That's amazing. <laughs> Possums are pretty cool, actually. Yeah. Unfortunately, we mostly see them dead on the side of the road, but... Okay, so what does what does the cheat code do for me? Um, there's an auto-fire, so you don't have to tap the button. Okay. There's a turbo boost. Do not take any damage. <laughs> nice. Brilliant. <laughs> you want that one? That's God mode. Sure, yeah. All right, all right. This is amazing. All right, we're going to pause the little gameplay okay. just a little okay. bit, ladies yep. and gentlemen. Cheats. Oh, I died. <laughs> That's the last time I die. <laughs> you got this. <laughs> this is, the, this is uh, amazing. Fire. Yeah, we played this game so much as a kid. And then you're like, you know, because then you're conserving your bombs and everything, you know, so short on ammo all the time. This is amazing. Do not take oh. damage. <laughs> See how many times I can die before we get this. Alright, now you should be god mode. Nice. I'm doing a lot of bombs. Oh, nope, ran out of bombs. As a programmer, you might appreciate Game Genie. Are you are you familiar with Game Genie? Do you remember that back in the day? Um, no, it was, I never it messed like, with it. Yeah. You took the Nintendo and you put it inside the Game Genie and then put it in. It was it basically intercepted. Okay. And yep. it took any of the key hex codes and said, you know, let's change this from a 1 to a 99. And you nice. can get 99 lives or what. Nice. I love it. And that's exactly what this, this software is doing, actually. So That's awesome. You should be, should be God moding now. All right, while Brett is in God mode, if anyone has any questions, our guest today, um, uh, Brett Stout Willett, he's an expert in uh, educational technologies, talking about, you know, learning online, learning in, in social media and things like that. He's happy to answer any questions you guys have, happy to talk about chat GPT, happy to talk about uh, video gaming, educational gaming, any questions you guys have, throw them in chat, we'll be happy to answer those while we play some Tiger Hilly. Yes, Prize this game, game was a classic. <laughs> Love it. Tiger. Oh, and I got the buddy. Oh, I forgot about the buddy. Yes. This is amazing. Tiger. Oh, but I killed the buddy. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, forgot. you're invincible. Your sidecar yeah, is not. <laughs> yes, but I forgot that you get a sidecar. So it makes Man. me so happy. Uh, this this game type is just a classic. Uh -oh, what did I do? Did I um, pick something? Just I think I maybe opened the Xbox. <laughs> Glad I wasn't playing something right then. It's under. <laughs> no worries. Man. Yes, yeah, this, this is such a good game. Yeah, these these are classics. Have you have you seen the versions of these where your your hitbox is one pixel? No. So the screen is just oh filled with like chaos, right? <laughs> your your hitbox is one pixel, so all you need to do is fly in this really <laughs> tiny <laughs> space. That's the latest iteration of these. Really popular awesome. in Japan, not yeah. so much in the U.S., but I should bust out. I'll find one of those next time you're on. <laughs> yes, that's awesome. Play some God Mode and Infinite Lives. But yeah, this was a... I don't even know what this game type is called, but this is a classic arcade yeah, strategy. Yeah. Did you ever play League of Legends? No, I never. I, I'm familiar with it, but I never played it. I went, um, I went World of Warcraft, actually, was my, my go-to. Yeah, there's um, there was a mode called URF, U R F, Ultra Rapid Fire, and it was basically a like a it was a mode that at first they just did um, seasonally, like it was like once a year you get like a week of URF or something, and it was I think everybody had unlimited ammo, no cooldowns on any of your special abilities, and oh yeah, you didn't have ammo, you had yeah no cooldown on your abilities. Um, and uh like one hit <laughs> you get touched and you die but you get to spam all your favorite 
spells as as a as a caster and anyway so it just got ridiculous and you know everybody like figures out what which characters to play because you know you just like spam the q you know the the one like really quick like area aoe um spell that just like wipes everybody out because again you only need to hit him once and um anyway there's a lot of fun yeah. doing things like that or or yeah I, I always have a always get a kick out of so so matt is in a robot has described this as a vertical uh shoot em up which yeah yep. <laughs> an yep. overhead yeah this is like classic masher. old school video okay <laughs> this, this is the quarter eater yeah <laughs> speaking oh, of which i don't know if it's open anymore but it, have you ever been to fire bottom betty's I've been by there. I've not been inside. Yeah. I need to. Yeah. yeah, it looks cool. The bunch of classic arcades. There's also one in Railroad Square Park. There's a pinball uh, flash arcade. Yes. You can pay for like an hour of access. I love Railroad Square. Yeah. You do the first Friday thing sometimes, right? Because there's the Ask a Scientist group yeah, down there. Yeah, so, so that used to yeah. be mine, actually. Okay. So, oh, so nice. I, I used to run that pre-COVID, and then yep. David Collins took over. Should be here this Friday, actually. Nice. Yep, yeah, he asked me. I need to get back to him. And, but one of these Fridays, I'll go do that. That's awesome. That'll be really fun. Um, <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, so yeah, if you're, if you're down at First Friday this week, go go find the Ask a Scientist group. Apparently, Ken started them, too. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> so, but yeah, we yeah, did that for six years before. And it's where I got most That's of my awesome. uh, my uh, collection of people for, for this, awesome. actually. Awesome. So you met him in person? or you? you yeah, met yeah, him? I was there um, in awesome. the fall. I was at First Friday, and uh, I was there with a friend um, who, I guess, had helped with one of those. Um, and so she introduced us. And I think as we were talking about research and just other interests, you know, I mentioned that I that I love video games. Like, oh, let me introduce you to Ken. <laughs> I, think, I think that's how we got connected. I think yeah. he emailed both of us. And, that's awesome. Yeah, oh, that's perfect. All right, anyone just joining us? Um, questions about uh, learning technologies, uh, learning in social media, learning on Twitter or Twitch or Reddit or whatever it might be, uh, which hopefully some people are doing at least a little bit right now. <laughs> yeah. In the meantime, I'm happy to throw out a few of my questions. One of my, my sure. favorites to ask, and I, I do this with every guest because I've seen way too many movies. Uh, <laughs> what movie or TV show gets your discipline right and what gets it wrong? Oh, man. Oh, that's good. And um, your, your discipline is loosely defined here. I mean, feel free. <laughs> uh, basically, we're looking for those moments when you watch a movie where you're like, they get it, or, oh my God, why <laughs> did that just happen? So, so for many years, I identified more as a mathematician. Mm -hmm. um, and it's so, so maybe I'll answer first <laughs> as a mathematician, which I no longer am a mathematician. But um, uh, as a mathematician, we always, we always joke that the movie Pi... Yeah, like the guy the goes, black and white, goes drilled crazy the brain, and yeah. like drills his head. Oh, spoilers! Sorry, <laughs> lady. Um, <laughs> but yeah, gentlemen. Uh, pretty early on, you you get that the guy's like not 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 quite yeah. right. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we always joked that that was the accurate math. <laughs> like you used to get so lost in your head about trying to prove something. Yeah. Um, and then the one that really didn't get it right was like something like a Beautiful Mind or mm. um, or, or like Goodwill Hunting, where like people are just brilliant and don't don't actually have to <laughs> yeah. train or, or get it. Cool. Yeah. They just like magically get it um yeah so yeah so I, I'll, I'll say that um see, i'm trying to think what else so yeah i mean i think some uh I'm trying to think what other movies are, are good illustrations of of how to learn and <laughs> how to support learning. I mean, so many of those are like chosen one savant type scenarios, yes, right? Yeah, it's, people it's just, we love it's, the it's movies the, about people that it's just so Well, because it's, it's easy, it's lazy, yeah. right? And that's why conspiracy yeah. theorists love their conspiracies because they're the only ones that get it. Yeah. Hamster Licious, it's been a while. Welcome back to the stream. Thank you for joining us. Uh, our guest today is Dr. Brad Stout Willett. He's an educated, um, uh, an expert in education technologies. Um, we're actually into Scotch already, yeah. so it's going to be it's going to be a long <laughs> night. A great night. But Hamster Licious, it's great to see you back. Thank you for joining us again. If you have questions, throw them in chat. All right. So education, also programming, is acceptable. We want to yes. talk about oh, yeah, fish yeah. or hackers. Oh yeah, yeah. Or, I was going to say. Um, Oh shoot! I had a I had a programming idea a second ago. Uh, which one was it? Yeah, I mean hackers. That's so old school. Um, <laughs> that's that is a perfect movie, and I will fight you if you say otherwise. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Anyone that hasn't seen hackers, you definitely it is, should. It's quality. It's quality for sure. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, oh man. Yeah, but yeah, basically every movie about hacking. I was gonna say sneakers. You ever see sneakers? Yep. yep like it's yep. so easy. Yes. Like you just kind of get into whatever data system you want. And, mm. Yeah. The um, one, one, one. I'll defend as a naive uh, programmer, having just at least a little surface level knowledge, and some of my best friends are programmers. Is uh, um. Uh, the social network. The I'm Facebook just going to name that. Is it actually <laughs> so captured good. the actual programming? Like yeah, the, the yeah, language yeah, like behind it. It's, it's not and... sexy. It's not 3D graphics. It's yep. just like if then just, statements. You got to and... sit there with your headphones on and just yep. crank it out. Yeah. I also, I was going to say, I think that one does a decent job. Um, and again, I don't know if this is fair to like reality or, or Mark Zuckerberg or, or whatever. Yeah. I don't know. No, I don't think anybody knows the story. That's why they made up the movie. <laughs> there's non-disclosure agreements or whatever. Yeah. Um, but I think in terms of the, the ethos of why would we create a social networking site and why is it like so addictive and, and, and people want it so much, I think the social network like nails that. So again, I have no idea if it's reality or fiction, but it captures the feeling of yeah. here's why we, we want to have this service in this tool. And sometimes that's good enough. Ninja Physics, welcome back. Hamsterlicious, it's a pleasure to have you guys back. Thank you for joining us. Questions, throw them in chat. We're happy to chat. I'm yeah. The movie question is one of my favorites because it's like yep. you never it's know what what pet peeve is going to trigger someone. Yep. So we had yep. Uh, yep. So, Maya Murphy on a couple years ago and or, or a couple weeks ago, and he's an astrophysicist, and he watched uh, the Netflix movie. Um, What's the one where the scientists were saying an asteroid's coming and no one believed them? Don't look up. Don't look up. And it's like, there's a lot of stuff wrong in don't look up, but like his rage moment was when the lights were on inside the telescope. Because if the lights are on, it's hitting the detector and it's signal right, the noise right. you're trying to detect. That reminds me of one of my favorite jokes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> All right. Do you believe in space vampires? <laughs> <laughs> I do now, <laughs> uh, but I, I don't know how to properly answer that question, actually. Well, so the, I figured the, the, how it actually goes, but the punchline is like, we have no idea whether or not space is full of vampires because, you know, as long as our telescopes rely on mirrors, then there's no way to tell. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I guess we have other That's, types of telescopes. That is now. logically sound. <laughs> So, you know, you just never know. I mean, also probably vampires don't need oxygen, most likely. I don't know. Mm. They're kind of undead, so. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm very curious how how they scatter light, but don't reflect it. Mm. Photochemist Ooh, in me. Yes, there you go. Like, there you go. We, fundamental we need a paper. physics problem. Yes. Like something about aluminum backing on a glass film. Yeah. This sounds like a great <laughs> exactly. theoretical paper. Yeah. I mean, so what we should do is data mine Twitter. Yes. Combine that with my yes. expertise. We have a yep. collaborative paper. Twitter and Reddit. You we can get like <laughs> millions of posts. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you saw the birth of something brilliant here tonight. <laughs> yep. So we'll, we'll notify you when that paper comes out and we both can retire. <laughs> exactly. That's got to be worth something. Right. Oh, yeah, Goodwill Hunting. Yeah, Goodwill Hunting. Um, Telling me it isn't based on fact. Yeah. I mean, there are, see, like, like uh, so the guy they mentioned in it. Ramanujan. The, Ramanujan. Yeah, so you get math major, so that we, like, worship Ramanujan. Yeah. We all wanted to be Ramanujan. Uh, but then, uh, what was his name? Mm, but the it, guy who wrote Principia Mathematica. Um, uh, Newton? Like Dave, no. No, 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 no. Um, not, not Newton. That was uh, Physica. What was his name? It's like a real basic. Somebody in chat knows name. this. Yeah. Some, After right. delicious. Yeah, ninja somebody, somebody Google Principia Mathematica. But anyway, the guy who wrote that won. So there's the Fields Medal that they talk about in Goodwill Hunting. And mm -hmm. it's like the Nobel Prize, but they only award it every four years. So blah, blah, blah. It's way more prestigious. Um, but anyway, this guy, basically this guy wrote in Principia Mathematica that if you don't win that and make, you know, basically like change all of math by the time you're 25, that you're never going to jesus so it's like just you know so we we're all super depressed as undergraduates right like none of us were geniuses we were all just normal <laughs> normal yeah. people um you know trying to study and um yeah anyway so yeah but yeah i did not change the face of mathematics by 25 so it's not gonna happen <laughs> at this point <laughs> that's the punchline um david burton 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 russell i don't think anyway we'll have to google Principia mm. Mathematica. Uh, I'll find it. But anyway, but yeah, it's like it's like the wonderfully in inspirational book, and then yeah, and then super depressing because you're like, yeah, I haven't I haven't done anything with my life. <laughs> and but what? Uh, 
Uh, written so by the, mathematician philosophers Alfred Whitehead. Bertrand and, Russell. It was Bertrand, Bertrand Russell. Russell. Okay. Yeah, All right. yeah, you're right. There we go. Ninja Physics got there, Whitehead yeah. and Russell. Nice. Nice. Yep. So anyway, yeah, Bertrand Russell was all about like, yeah, you got to be a genius. <laughs> if, you're, if you're not a genius at math at, by 25, like, so basically by your undergrad years, if you if you haven't figured it and fixed everything yet. Then, yeah. But then, yeah, and then Ramanujan was a real dude. Was, yeah. This guy in India who like. But died by figured it all 32. Out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He went to, well, yeah. So they discovered him. They brought him back to England and then he caught all the diseases. <laughs> Classic. Yep. Like pneumonia yeah, or good. something. Yeah, it was, it was yeah, a lung condition. Yeah, because yeah, he didn't grow up with the immunity. Uh, fun factoid, not so fun factoid. <laughs> depressing his factoid. Defected, well, more depressing than that. His wife was 11 when they got married. And so when he died, oh, she was 21. Oh, and as gosh. it was tradition in India, you don't remarry afterwards. Oh. So from the age of 21 until her death at like 90 something, she was single. Oh, man. Wow. So, I did not know that. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> well, that's a downer. All right. We need a, we need a happy topic. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, it was interesting because I watched the, the, the movie, um, The Man Who Knew Infinity, right? Which is recounting uh, yeah, his life. Yep, and they, yep. they had his wife at like 20 years old. And I always, after I see any of these like pseudo documentaries, I look up, you know, what are the misconceptions? Right. What do they get wrong? Yep. Because, you know, my question I ask here. Yep. But yeah. The short answer is those. Don't those... Want to catch them all. Exactly. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> the short answer is some of those brilliant geniuses that just get it exist, but for 99.999% of the world, yep. you just have to earn it. Right? Yeah. You, you just got to work, work hard. Yeah. And there's a massive body of research that says above a certain threshold, you're not more likely to win the Nobel Prize or Fields, Fields Medal. It is just work, time, and luck. Yeah, yeah. It's like be at the right place at the right time. So, yeah, like, yeah. Some of the physicists who, you know, had breakthroughs and, yeah. like, and some of these imaging and, and that kind of thing. It's, like, and yep, it's just there's the right time. And, yep. and, and really, I mean, I think anybody who's at all humble in academia will admit, like, we all God. stand on the shoulders of those who come before us. So, yeah. Yeah. That's another fun factoid. The shoulders of giants. You know that quote comes from. Yeah, it's attributed to Newton. Uh -huh. It was actually him talking shit. <laughs> and so that's the, amazing. The back like I've more heard, <laughs> it was like you know he came up with all these ideas and he's presenting them be to the Royal Society and there are certain people that just don't believe him, right? Uh -huh, and so uh -huh. one of the people that didn't believe him, I don't remember his name. Uh, Ninja Physics Hamsterlicious. You might know the story better than I. It's it's a classic physics story. But the guy was just notoriously a short individual. And so when Newton's uh -huh. like talking shit about, well, I did it. And if I've seen any further, it's by standing on the shoulders of giants was a slight to this short uh -huh. individual. <laughs> so, so we treat it as a profound moment of brilliance, yeah. which yeah, in the, in the context shit. we use wow. it, it is, but wow. yeah. that no, that's very crazy. fun. <laughs> Hamsterlicious, thank you for the gift sub. I, we, 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 we don't need your support, but we do appreciate it. It helps with our drinking problem. We're, we're drinking some scotch as well as some ology from... Um, yeah, the uh, ology's gone. Ology's yeah. gone. So, yeah, we busted out scotch. It's delicious. So, um, yeah. <laughs> so, thank you. But, yeah, yeah, thank you very much for the gift sub. And thank you for joining us if you guys have questions. Yeah, yeah I appreciate it. <laughs> I just learned that Schrodinger's cat was a roast of quantum physics. It was. It was like a, I didn't know that. Yeah. So so uh, this this happens in physics a lot, where somebody will propose a new model for physics, and someone will take it to the most the most extreme possible scenario to okay. say if this is true on a quantum level, this should be true on a real level. Uh -huh, and so uh -huh. quantum mechanics basically said every event is probabilistic. Either you know it's a 50-50 probability, it could happen or it couldn't happen. Therefore, it's both simultaneously until it's resolved, and they said well if you take a quantum event inside a box with a cat and that quantum event can kill or not kill the cat the cat is both alive and dead right and so right. it was like a you know take it to the most extreme possible scenario and they did and that's <laughs> yeah the the there's a lot of examples of that in physics it's a really fun hobby of nice. extreme thought experiments nice it's kind of what politicians do but much more legitimate right <laughs> and less problematic and <laughs> ruinous for uh <laughs> sorry it's been a rough week how do you pronounce uh, this uh glenn glenn, glenn Marenghi. i don't glenn know Marenghi. i'm sure that's wrong so i'm sure delicious. this is what we're drinking very wrong i got I, I, solid i organized a conference and i got this bottle of scotch and so brett and i are drinking it while he plays tiger hilly yeah, <laughs> for the first time in probably what 35 35 years, years. <laughs> or so. i was seven or so oh man <laughs> Yep. That is amazing. Uh, I was like, uh...
Really good. Oh, there's a book um, that if people like uh, fiction, you might enjoy. And Schrodinger's Cat meets fiction. There's a book called The Rise and Fall of Dodo. <laughs> and it's um, it's basically like imagining a government agency uh, that's basically like Dio's synchronous events or diachronotic events or something. Anyway, it's like time travel, basically. <laughs> it's like a government agency that discovers time travel. And so oh, they basically... Neil Stevenson. Yes. You, you, yeah, shit. I love Neil Stevenson. Yeah, yeah. I love me no, I'm, Stevenson. I'm surprised I haven't yeah. read this. It's great. Read it. it it's so fun. Um, but it gets into like some of the Schrodinger's box stuff because they have to... Basically, the, the premise of the book that you learn immediately is that there used to be real magic in the world. <laughs> and it left the world when at the, with the advent of the photograph because <laughs> that was someone the photographed <laughs> someone photographed an eclipse and then the whole world saw <laughs> an eclipse wow. and so basically wow. science won and magic lost because someone photographed the eclipse that is amazing and that was the day that magic died <laughs> and so because of that you need to go into like some space where magic and science can coexist or something, which is basically like a Schrodinger's box. And so they have to build something like this. And <laughs> um, anyway, and so somehow very early on, they get a witch on their side in, in present day and they're able to do all kinds of, all kinds of shenanigans. Mm -hmm. so it's uh, it's, it's a very, it's a, it's much sillier than most of Neil Stevenson. Uh, I, if you've ever read any of his stuff. I just sent it to Debbie, so that will be my next uh, bike ride book, actually. It is. It's pretty fantastic. <laughs> Neil Stevenson is pretty spectacular. Yeah. 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 Do you have a favorite? Who's, what's your favorite Neil Stevenson? Oh, man. I got to look up the list. I feel like my go-to is always... Well, I mean, on this... Okay. Snow Crash is the easy one, right? Yeah. But I mean, yeah. that's the original. Cryptonomicon... Yeah, I didn't good. like Seven Eves actually. I liked the first half. Yeah, of Seven Eves. It got weird after the first yeah. half. It really yeah. so no spoilers, but it got really different. <laughs> I really enjoyed the first because there's like an Elon Musk character and a Neil deGrasse yeah, Tyson yep. character. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, but yeah, then it got then it just completely changed. Uh, so anyway, Quicksilver. Quicksilver is good. Did you mm. read um, the Diamond Age? No, I, I really. Haven't. Oh, you got to read. So I usually say the Diamond Age is my favorite. It's really good. The Diamond Age. Yeah, read read the Diamond Age. So the basic, so I, I like to say Neil Stevenson, most of his books are like, what if the world was like it is now with like one small thing different? <laughs> so the diamond age, the one small thing is what if we could just 3D print anything we needed out of water? Like if we just took water from the ocean, so infinite supply, make whatever we need and then like break, break it down with no waste. And so basically like you don't make glass anymore, you make stuff out of diamond. Like so all your windows, screens, you know, that kind of stuff. It's all diamond. Like, there's no shortage of, of energy. Mm. So then, like, the, the basic premise, like, at the start of the book is, well, there are no more wars for resources because you have infinite resources. Mm -hmm. So then what do people start fighting about? <laughs> and it's ideology. Um, anyway, and then the rest of the book goes from there. So it's, like, a really fascinating... Like, I mean, it's, he always has great characters. So it's great characters, but then it's just sort of, like... like Basically, there's a group of neo-Victorians who just, like, ride horses and, you know, write on paper with pen just because, you know. Because, like, if you can do anything, if you can print everything in diamond, yeah, why not make, why not write in a leather-bound book? Because, like, why not? <laughs> Matt is a, isn't a robot, has an alternative. That's what you fight about. Yes, there you go. Yes, that's, that's ultimately what it's all about. The Victorians versus the Confucianists versus the Communists or whatever. Yeah. yeah. That's really what it's about. Oh, uh, I like so, yeah, it. Yeah, so the so Diamond Age is fantastic. That's Have awesome. you read Re Remda? Or no. Read Me? No. It's supposed to be Read Me? Okay, so that's the gamer's choice for Neil Stevenson. And in there, so again, there's always about one thing, like what if one thing was different? In there, it's like, what if World of Warcraft basically figured out how to like fully monetize with real world money? And then what if you accidentally took all the money from a Russian mobster? <laughs> what would happen? What a, and what a premise. Fast forward to a thousand pages of global trotting awesomeness. <laughs> uh, I love the dystopian lean he has in everything. That's amazing. Yes, always. Yeah. I, I, I apologize. I'm, I'm putting all these um, uh, Amazon links in chat. Yeah. Uh, not because I'm advocating for Amazon or anything, but just it's the first link that yes. pops up when I yeah. search these yeah. books. So the feel free game. to find these wherever you wish to do so yeah yeah Always. buy them from the local bookstore sure yeah, yeah. well audiobooks is the contentious yeah. thing right now okay right yeah. so yep 
Yeah, Neil Stevenson. Basically, everything is so so good. Because he pushed yeah. back. It was him, right, that pushed up back against Audible. How they're like shortchanging yeah. the small yeah. authors and stuff. So, yeah, find someone to supply this audiobook. Support your yeah. local. Well, you know, writer. Neil Stevenson has matured as a writer. Because mm-hmm. um, like a lot of his, a lot of his books, he's he has characters that you're like, yeah, that's basically him. <laughs> um, like in, in Remda, like there's like this Fantasy family, yeah. yeah, there's like the family that lives in like upstate Idaho, like a few miles from the Canadian border, mm-hmm. which it turns out like that's actually where Neil Stevenson lives. <laughs> um, and they're like, kind of like off the grid and like real crunchy. And you're like, okay, this is interesting. And then he wrote a, uh, he actually, he doesn't write too many sequels, but he wrote a sequel hmm. to Remda, um, called the, what is it? It's called fall. Um, anyway, also very interesting. It's a little bit more philosophical. Um, but like he, he describes some of the, the maturation of, of that character and the family. Cause you know, they were like, wait, I th- we thought you were like this kind of fundamentalist who lived up in upstate Idaho. And he's like, well, you know, like we've adapted and learned. And so I don't know, just, I have no idea what his personal journey has been like, but it's, it's interesting to like read an author yeah. again from snow crash, which is like so many years ago, but still foundational and if you don't know snow crash was like about the early days of the internet it's actually yeah. it's pretty good pretty in line with my they research have, interest. they have talked about making that into a movie for like a decade oh, now oh, i don't know if they can so yeah it'd be really fun but yeah there's depending some, how some they things. execute it right because yeah, 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 they it, can mess it up yeah for sure um but yeah i mean and, but he writes all this stuff and so this is before the days of like uh actual virtual reality or online, like, mm-hmm. you know, 3D spaces and virtual spaces that you're navigating an avatar around. And he just dreamt it all up. Like, oh, like, what if we had an avatar and you can yeah. like, move around a 3D space? And um, and so like things like the metaverse, that's that's Neil Stevenson that Facebook ripped off. <laughs> uh, I remember he, he had comments about like, oh yeah, so they're calling it meta, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Talking about the metaverse. Yep. That's, that's the old school snow crash stuff. <laughs> before any of it existed all right we will shoot this shit all day but we actually have a question oh, all right yes, yes, so yes, i've yes. just only recently learned about chat gpt uh that's that's true for most of us actually yeah, uh, yeah it co- just launched november 30th so yeah, yeah. yeah a colleague of mine was demonstrated that it can answer undergraduate physics questions with a relatively good degree of accuracy yeah. do you know how it's trained on new data um i don't know the exact specifics um should we do a factoid? If somebody wants to request a factoid, yeah, use yeah, your internet yeah. points we, we right now. We're going to drop about, a knowledge uh, bomb, but you got to yeah. pay for them. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> we don't science right, bomb right. for free. Um, actually, we can. Yeah. So I, I, I don't. I know that they pull on like all. There we go. Things. Ninja Physics requested. <laughs> all right. A factoid. Okay. So so all right. So so ChatGPT is built on GPT four. Um, let's go jump back to GPT two, which was trained on mm, like what one and a half billion, a billion parameters or something like that um gpt3 then jumped up to 175 billion parameters so if you think about training model 175 billion things you're, you're putting into it and then supposedly chat gpt and gpt4 um is trained on about a trillion <laughs> uh, parameters. so where, where is it getting that data set where is that uh, it's from everything it's, it's just, just any it's, any yeah, information just, they can archive yeah, and, and compile and, and just yeah. give it to it and now Google's trying to up, and, and so I just heard this week that Google is trying to basically match GPT-4. And, and again, like Google has all the info yeah. because we've all been giving Google all the info for all their free services. Like every time we use a Google product yeah, for free. I, I, I look forward to every ad I have for the next week being Neil Stevenson books. So yes. <laughs> love it. Yep. Well worth it. Yeah. That, is, that is that is a sacrifice. The end justifies the means, <laughs> yeah. ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. You heard yeah. it here yeah. first from Neil Brett. Stevenson's amazing. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But anyway, so so um, I mean, yeah, it's just I mean, I don't like a trillion variables of some kind. Like I don't know where you get it, but yeah, I think I think they're just sucking up data from everywhere. Um, just anywhere they can get an archive, just yeah. feed it in and yep, yep, dump it in. Yep. Um, yeah, I, I so I, I teach a data analytics class, and and so this fall or no spring, yeah, whatever. Yeah, this spring. semester, yeah. uh, <laughs> we're at that point of the night. Um, <laughs> this this spring, um, we've been opening every class just by 
asking chat GPT questions. Um, and so, you know, we'll ask it things like, Hey, what should graduate students learn about data analytics? Or like, how are data analytics different than data science or things like that? And then we'll critique the, the, the response. And I think generally, like I, I'd score chat GPT, like pretty consistently at like a B plus, B, wow. B plus, like it does well, it's not perfect yet, but. It's but again, with like this iteration, you know, um, so yeah. So basically if, if you go and spend five seconds putting your essay prompt into chat GBT, you'll get a B plus if you were in my class. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, but yeah, so I told my students, like, I am going to teach you how to use this and then ask you not to, <laughs> <laughs> but yes, I, I think, I think we should all be familiar with it. I think we should all try it out. Um, but for me, uh, I mean, my perspective is like, we've always had to rely on at least some layer of trust in academia. Yeah. Um, it's a, again, a little bit like video games. Like I think one of the ways we can best motivate students is to, is to like tell them that they can't go outside a, a, a boundary or border and then just see the creativity that happens. Like um, if you tell students they can't cheat or they can't, they, you cannot do this. I think I think some of the most brilliant stuff you'll ever see is people getting around mm -hmm. <laughs> whatever rule you make. Yeah. And so because of that, like people have always cheated, um, and and so I mean that's always been an issue. And I think any system that we ever have to try and detect stuff is always imperfect. I think we're always slower at detection than creative students are at at, at figuring stuff out. And so I I think I think rather than like ramp up like how do we detect ChatGPT and you know, how do we surveil students or, or whatever? I think, I think it's a time to, to come back to like, what are, what are the basics of like academic integrity and what does it mean to be part of an academic community and, and that kind of thing. Like it's just the, the trust of like, Hey, we're in this together. We're trying to learn together. Um, yeah, I, uh, that's one thing I've looked into a bunch in terms of the online cheating, like online exams versus in person. And if you do self-reporting or like actual analysis, it typically is the same percentage of people cheating no matter what, as long as yeah. you've explicitly said there's some kind of honor code. But I mean, to, to, to I don't know if counter your point or, or change sure. the direction yeah. a little bit. Yep. I mean, at some point, every new tool is viewed as a affront to the traditional method of doing things. Yeah. And yep. so at what point yep. is it the skill set has changed and like it should be a tool that people use right like so so this could be a i mean like we could draw an extreme line on on word processors and you shouldn't be able to use spell check but we allow that yep. right and so yep. like yep. gpt yep. is an extreme version of that but like at what point is that an acceptable tool that you have to build upon for your own creation yeah um Yep. And uh, I don't know. I mean, you know, we, we both work in academic publishing and yeah. I hate writing abstracts. <laughs> yes. But like ChatGPT would be the kind of thing that it'd be really good at writing an abstract. Yeah. So like, I was, yeah, I was talking to an editor at, uh, he does ACS energy letters, Prashant Kamat, and there's an article that's coming out in ACS energy letters. That's basically a review article of perovskite solar cells in the progress. And it's entirely written by chat GPT. And so the S, the supporting information, the author openly acknowledges this is how he wrote the paper, but the supporting information is essentially, here's what it spit out and here's the things that I edited. And like, here's where I had to correct it or here's where I had to revise nice. it. Yep. So he's actually yep. showing, you know, what the raw was versus what I did. And it was pretty good, especially review articles. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. in 1986, yeah. they did this, they saw this. 1988, they saw this, like it's, <laughs> it's a pattern. So it's, yep. I don't know. It's terrifying and yeah. intriguing. It, it reminds me a little bit of, again, being being somebody with a math background, it reminds me of like, you know, the debates are like, well, can you use a calculator? calculator yeah. like, and, you know, what can, what can you use to like... You'll never have a calculator with you at all times. Yeah, it's like, well... Yes, yeah, I do. I literally... <laughs> better than the one I had in high school. The yep. thing I have in my pocket yeah. <laughs> is like infinitely better than the Wolf TI-83. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. yeah. Mathematica and circa 1996 you know <laughs> um yeah so it's it's a little bit like well yeah maybe we should change what we expect people to learn about math you know like if if you have these tools like how do we use them well um and you know and i think we always said like well you need to learn the basics so that you can kind of sniff out when an answer is really wrong or fishy. Yeah, and i think bullshit. the same thing like yeah with chat gpt like it gets them stuff wrong like seriously wrong sometimes um and so you need to know enough like to be confident and, and to correct it, critique it. Um, it's kind of, at least right now, and again, they'll probably fix this 
I don't know, within the next six months or a week. I don't know. I mean, the timeline's staggering. Part <laughs> of the really thing is like, who knows? Who knows? You know, we could say this today, and who knows what it's going to be like tomorrow or next week. Um, but. Uh, but right now, ChatGPT is notorious for just making up references. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Actually. They look it's, legit, though. Yeah, they, 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 they're formatted correct. It's yeah. great at formatting. Yep. It sounds good. And so if you don't know like the actual topic, the mm-hmm. actual area, then you, you might not catch it. Yeah. But And so, you know, why not quiz students that way? Yeah. It's like, hey, catch the catch the faulty reference or... Um, I mean, it's, 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 it's a different skill set. And this is something I wrestle with in general chemistry, because back in the day, it was like, memorize the periodic table, memorize mm-hmm. this set of equations. Yeah. And that I hope is they don't not, do that anymore. <laughs> some I hated do. that in I, high school. <laughs> I have colleagues that do not give students equation because oh. they should memorize them. And it's oh. like, what are you training them for? The desert island scenario that yeah. never exists? Just in like, case you need to do the, chemistry on the desert island. <laughs> like, I get they need to know relationship between variables and equations are important and all that. But like, what is the skill that prepares them for the future and that is not it <laughs> like i yep. just yeah i don't know yep but but this, the same thing happens with you know chat gpt like what what skill set do we need to train them for yeah I've, yep. I've said for a while that i would love to write a general chemistry test that is open internet like if i could challenge them and like yeah. skill set you're testing for is very different but i don't know how to do that yeah, I mean, I think I think it's real world, real real world problems, right? Because like all any any like practical problem is open book, open internet. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't mean anybody knows how to solve it. Um, and actually, I had a I had a math professor. Uh, hopefully, he's not listening. I can't imagine he is. But <laughs> the guy's name was uh, was Exner. We called him the Executioner <laughs> because his like testing philosophy was so different than anything of us had ever experienced. Mm-hmm. So like as a freshman, eighteen year old coming out of high school, you know, where everybody's smart. You know, you're used to getting A's on everything. And then you get into this class and he like, he believed in like a 50% of total points was like really good. Mm -hmm. And so he would be like, I don't care if you solve it. Show me how you'd set up the problem. Mm -hmm. You know, and actually he he would have so many problems on the test that you literally could not solve all of them. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. And and he would give you, here's how many points each problem is worth. Mm -hmm. So like go after the high point problems just set it up don't solve it like you're going to get 90 percent just for setting it up and showing how you would go about solving it Mm -hmm. um and but i mean i i got like i was getting c (laughs) minuses the first couple quizzes the first couple exams um because it it was just so different i couldn't wrap my head around like how to think this way Mm -hmm. and it but then by the end you know i think i I had mastered it and so i don't know this is like one of my my favorite stories it it's very self-serving, so I apologize. No worries. Uh, um, but like the last exam in that class, I think, because he curved everything. So I think anything above an 80% or an 80, 80 out of however many points there were, was an A. Like it got curved really hard. I think I got 123. <laughs> <laughs> it was like out of 130 points or something. And so like I finally figured out how to do his tests. But I think that kind of thinking, like it, it transformed me, like having to think so differently about how to approach a problem, what counts, like it's not just the, it's not just the number that you end up at the end, you know, and did you remember to put the right units on or something, but it's like, how do you go about setting up the problem solving? And, mm-hmm. um, and so anyway, I, I don't know, I think there's a lot that we can do to transform how we assess our people learning and yeah. Yeah. Like what, are, what are the thorny issues in chemistry? Like well, make, I, make people write about. It. I mean, it, it, <laughs> it, 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 it's hard because like your assessment should reflect like the knowledge and skill set you want them to have, but that skill set is evolving with things like this, with Wolfram Alpha that can solve problems. Yep. You don't need to do the calculations; you need to know how it exists. Yes. Yep. But uh, Hamsterlicious said a follow up. Chat GPT seems a bit arrogant. <laughs> One of the physics questions <laughs> that it got wrong was because it had an incorrect value for G. Uh, gravity. <laughs> I, I believe it had reported half the value rather than nine point eight. <laughs> when I asked it, uh, when I asked why it reported an incorrect value of G, it plainly told me that the nice. value it used was correct and it wouldn't change. Nice. <laughs> well, you just awoke in Skynet, so congratulations, nice. Delicious. Nice. You are the end of all of us. <laughs> oh, I should have brought this up earlier. Um, did you hear that ChatGPT is already obsolete? This is my joke of the night. No, let's hear it. Maybe my second joke of the night. <laughs> um, so so ChatGPT has been um, superseded. There's a new AI called Cat GPT. If you want to Google it, All Cat right. GPT. It is 100% accurate. Does not get any answers wrong. 
So I don't know if anybody has a has a question in the chat, but we can feed it in a cat cat GPT. Oh my god, this is and, the thing. Uh, <laughs> this is, this is it will answer thing. perfectly. Any I promise. <laughs> any question that you ask. Cat GPT. Holy crap. I apologize, maybe. <laughs> so, I don't know. Yeah, so what are you what are you curious about? <laughs> Let me see, I gotta make sure my browser is working here. Cat GPT. Cat GPT. It will it will answer any question 100 percent correctly. <laughs> Ninja physics, thank you. Alright, yes. we're, we're gonna right. we're gonna let defer it, from the uh yep. all right, uh, here's, our cat overlords. Let us in here's let cat answer. GPT. We're gonna see how it answers this question. Type your message here. Does it say <laughs> 42 for the meaning of life? No, say ask what is the meaning of life and then see if, what is see the if it comes up with 42. What is the meaning of life? <laughs> All right, you ready for this, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen? I apologize. <laughs> meow, 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 meow. <laughs> I, can't, I can't argue with that. Yeah, it's not wrong. <laughs> not 42, but it's also not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> there, there you go, Ninja Physics. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. it, and, and you know, if you have a if you have a good advisor, they how can they argue? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's not what I was expecting, but it's also not wrong. <laughs> Cat GPT <laughs> to write your dissertation. You you heard it here first. <laughs> send your send your advisors to Ken. <laughs> exactly. Complain directly to my email, kghanson at fsu.edu. No, they have to tune in. They have to tune in to ask the scientists to complain. Uh, no email. Oh, do yeah, it. They have to they have to come to the next uh, live stream. <laughs> that reminds me of the paper that was nothing but the word chicken. And still gets published in a predatory journal. Yes, that, that has is, happened that multiple times. That is amazing. Times. Oh my gosh. Man, we could publish a paper on Cat GPT if we're willing to pay the publishing fee. <laughs> yeah, open access. Yeah. Cat GPT, write an abstract. <laughs> oh. Meow, 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 meow. All right, oh, Cat GPT, you're... should we switch games? <laughs> should we I switch think, games? I think we should what switch you, games. What do you want to go to? Um, we could do a Halo or we could do uh, Zelda. Halo. I like Zelda or Halo. Uh, it's up to you. Zelda is the easier one. We yeah. have a half hour. Okay. Yeah, so let's you do... want to do Zelda. Also, do Mario Zelda. Kart. Oh, we got to do Mario Kart. Let's do Mario Kart. All right. We're going to do Mario, Mario Kart, Kart, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Mario Kart 64. Nice. Oh, we're going to put this in Project 64. That is uh, that is an N64 controller. Uh, original N64. This connected is amazing. By USB. It's been a long time since I've held one of these. <laughs> it's amazing. a little more ergonomic than the uh, NES controller. So we got that going for us. Oh, man. Wow. Look at that. Ready for this. Let me see. Oh man. Go ahead and press start. 1996. Uh -oh. Is it not working? Am I not plugged uh, in? Oh, no, it's maybe slow. Try it again. Okay. Press start. Uh -oh. let, me, let me restart this. I might not have it plugged in. Ah. Uh, it's a lot of USB ports are operating right now. All right, try it right now. Oh, there, there we, we go. go. Perfect. Okay. Oh, so the other thing about ChatGPT uh, that I would say is I, I think I'm a little bit more worried. And again, this is up for debate, but I'm a little bit more worried right now um, about how we respond <laughs> than I am to actually um, the, the implications of the tool itself. So I'm worried mostly that hmm, I'm trying to remember who is my go to. I think Toad. I'm not sure if that's the right choice, but, um, but you know, like, I think that my concern is that we're going to start surveilling students in new ways. We're going to start being suspicious. Um, and I, I think if we, if we let ourselves land there, like it just, again, it kind of ruins the, like, what are we doing? You know, like, what is our educational enterprise? If like, we can't, we can't believe in students. I mean, so I'm, I'm curious in, in the education department, I see this in chemistry. There are certain educators that are like, will default to the student side and the other that like every student is cheating ever. Like, do you see that in, in education? Is there, I mean, are you guys more evidence-based practice in your teaching or is it fall back to anecdote and intuition? Um, it's definitely evidence-based, you know, and so I'm in instructional systems. So we're all about how to, how to plan for learning and, mm -hmm. and design things. Um, but I mean, with that, you know, so there's, there's probably a lot of like trying to anticipate and like, you know, make sure things are okay, but we're like how to design a better assessment. I mean, I think that's, that's probably part of it. Yeah. Um, 
So, so, so yeah. I'll, I'll follow up with the, the. I'll put you on the spot with this. So, so is there some like not evidence supported practice or decision making <laughs> or something that you are a hundred percent sure is correct? Is correct. Yeah, yeah. Is there something you will like? Until evidence proves otherwise, I'm sure this is correct. That's a good question. Huh. <laughs> and the hard part is there are probably many of these that you're not necessarily aware of, right? Like there there are certain instinctual things that you Oops. assume to be true, but like not necessarily evidence supported, but Yeah. Um hmm. ah. <laughs> wow, I just gave by a lot of stuff all over. Uh, rubber banded. Oh, yep, that was dumb. Forgot about those. It's been a long time. Um, that's a great question. What am I convinced of? That's not necessarily evidence support. Hmm. While you're thinking, I mean, so so my whole thing is self-directed learning, mm -hmm. and of course, like the problem with self-directed learning is people is motivation. Mm -hmm. Like people got to be motivated. They got to be willing to put in the work. Um, I think probably the thing that I'm convinced of is that most students are willing and want to figure stuff out. So I, I kind of have this inherent like optimism about our learners, mm -hmm. um, which, you know, is maybe or maybe not fair. Um, and, and again, like I'm, I'm biased by like all kinds of things. Like I, I work, my program is exclusively uh, grad students, you know, so. I've you know, had, I, I know that changes. Like, I'm not working with undergrads. I'm not working with K-12 students. Yeah. You know, so I'm sure that skews, you know, kind of my, my beliefs about. I mean, I've, I've read some on that, though, the, the, like the myth of the unmotivated learner. Like, it's not that they're okay, unmotivated. Okay. It's that you have not provided them the framework to do what they need to do kind of thing. Yeah. It's like it falls on the teacher more yeah. than the student, but it's way easier to default to blaming the student because that's the lazy thing. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blame, <laughs> blame, blame, blame the learner. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Ninja physics. I, I feel like learners need to have an environment where they aren't intimidated by the professor or the material. Yep. Yep. And yep. have the tools and the resources to do what they need to do. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's a lot of that infrastructure yeah. you're talking about. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Well, and, and it's why games are so good, right? Because like one of the one of the premises of games is that it's a safe space to fail. Mm, you know, and, and one, of the, one of the basics of most like non soul <laughs> souls kinds of games is is that you you can just keep trying stuff keep whittling away at it like keep learning little by little yeah and i mean it's yeah i mean really for me one of the hallmarks of of and i know earlier the question was what, what makes a game good but for me it's trying more than once you know yeah. so again there's a there's a certain place for like arcade games of of, of the past but um i i think for me, a lot of it is just getting to mess around and try stuff and yeah. push the boundaries. And well, Ninja yeah. Physics reiterated the safe space to fail is key, and it's yeah. something that's our K through twelve standardized testing has kind of like yeah, oh man, completely yeah, we so killed that. So messed this up. <sighs> yeah, that's it. And what's harsh is like next Wednesday I will be driving down to Tampa where I'm evaluating the grade five and grade eight assessment for chemistry and biology because those standardized tests exist whether we want them to or not. And it's, yeah, it's hard. All right, we should do a prediction. Nice. Actually, yeah. Um, yeah, well, which one do you want to do? Uh, do... This one's fun. We, we haven't talked about deep learning at all. Oh yeah, let's do it, yeah. Let's throw that one up there. All right, let's do a prediction, ladies and gentlemen. If you're not following, click the follow button. We're gonna do a... Um, <laughs> this is good, it could be really good. All right, sorry, I had to cut down the characters. I thought I did that, but I might not have copy and pasted it. All right. I remember these moles. They gave me nightmares as a kid. <laughs> Should be these guys. Classic. If you're not following us, click the follow button. We're going to throw up a prediction up there right now. Um, you guys are on Ask a Scientist Honor Code. You can't look up the answer, although the answer of this one would not be readily searchable. Maybe we make this open with Google. <laughs> sure, <laughs> sure. Totally up to you guys. Um, 
put your standard internet units there, pick, uh, click the predict button. The answer we want to know right now is if you're going to do a deep learning model for climate change, if you want to input a whole lot of data of climate change and you want deep learning to figure out, you know, CO2 production or anything like that. The question is, what is the energetic cost of that? Like there's the, you have to run the computers, there's an energetic input. And so the question here is that less than one car lifetime of CO2 emissions, or is it greater than one car lifetime? And so this is like putting in hundreds of thousands of data points into a deep learning model and saying execute. What is the CO2 emission and the energetic requirement to execute that deep learning modeling That's process? Question. So is there anything you want to add to that or is that? Nope, that's great. That's a great intro. And then we can talk about contextualizes it. <laughs> oh, this is mold so we're talking about one average car. We're, <laughs> take this world. Well, there's blurry areas here, but one car lifetime CO2 emission. Is that greater than or less than the CO2 from a deep learning climate change model? Which is an intriguing set of things we have tied into one question. Yes. Which yes. I love. <laughs> Matt is in a robot. The answer is not 42. The answer is greater than or less than one car lifetime. So, Matt, put your numbers in there now. Yes, Bet greater, accordingly. greater than or less than. Somebody be confident, put a thousand internet points in there. Oh, you're done. You want, <laughs> this, this. what do you want? Uh, more I scotch do, or century? What we'll do you do want? Another scotch? You'll do another scotch? Yeah, this is scotch. delicious. This is a good one. So here's here's the dirty secret. My last two guests have been like, let's drink bourbon. And then then Brett comes on. He's like, let's do sensory overload. I'm like, finally, a relief. And then here we are. we are drinking scotch. Sorry tonight. about that. <laughs> no, that's fine. Thankfully, uh, I'm on teaching release this semester, so oh, nice. I'm. There yeah. you go. <laughs> now, I taught I taught until six o'clock tonight, so I'm uh, tomorrow. I have no oh. meetings. Yeah, all good. Cheers, Brett. Thank yeah. you for joining me. I'm glad we could we could partake in the scotch. Yeah, yeah, when... All right, two seconds. Oh, there's the end. All right, CO2 of deep learning climate change model. Um, is it, in terms of CO2 production, is it less than one car lifetime or greater than one car lifetime? Brett, what is the answer? It is greater than one car lifetime. Is it like five? I think you Something sent like me... Five. It is approximately the footprint of five cars. A whole lifetime of five cars. And that's like every time you mess around with the variables and are trying to yeah, get a, get a, get a more efficient model, or, uh, I'm not doing a shortcut. Greater okay. than car lifetimes. And that's, I mean, yeah. I mean, that's, anyone crazy. that's been keeping track of the Bitcoin mining and stuff like that, like yeah. the energetic cost is enormous. Like yeah. the heat produced alone by these computers is absolutely breathtaking. Yeah. So underappreciated cost of doing yeah. business. Yeah. So and, and Ken and I were emailing about this. And so, you know, so of course, on one hand, sure, um, maybe AI is going to come up with some like brilliant solutions for, for you know, our, our energy consumption and the environment and that kind of thing. But um, but on the other hand, uh, every time we try and make it a little bit more efficient, we're like burning through, you know, burning through our resources. It, it is a cost. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's not trivial. Not trivial. Well, well that, that that got me thinking about it, and it, like, it's underappreciated just how energetically expensive, like, fundamental research is. Like, yeah, whether this yeah, is cold fusion it. or yep. nuclear chemistry or a synthesis of new molecule, because like, you don't have commodity scale production of anything. You you're doing a very specific task. It's always going to be energetically and you know um, uh, materials intensive, and it's it's it comes at a huge cost. But like what we're banking on with fundamental research is that some of it will pay off long term, right? In return, yep. and it's yep. that's the whole, yeah. yeah. It, it reframed it. I really appreciate that question because I did spend a lot of time thinking about these. Yeah, so I really yep. appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. There's yep. There's just no easy answers, <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah, we, just, we have to think carefully about all all these things. Hamsterlicious, going back to, uh, well, cheating, what would, depending on what cheating means in undergrad. So I do let, utilize Chegg heavily in my undergrad. Many people told me it was cheating, but the reality is that I absolutely had no experience with mathematics when I decided to study it. I made sure to keep my, uh, myself honest, though, and use it as a tool and not a crutch. I try to remind my students that any tool that can be abused, so you have to police yourself mm -hmm. in ways of using them, absolutely true. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, and again, that's the thing. Like, no matter what tools you have available to you, and um, you know, you know, no matter what the assignment, like people can figure out ways to to game it. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, talking about this on a on a on a chat like this, it's like you know, we have people that are familiar with games, but this is kind of like the primary premise of games that you you try and figure out. And again, I I think I mean, if anything, I think we should reward the creativity. <laughs> I mean, is. yeah 
course, like, again, like the integrity and academic honesty and stuff like that absolutely matters. But on the other hand, if people are like really clever, <laughs> I don't know, somehow we got to tap into that. Yeah. Like, I think gamers are some of the most clever people out there. I was going to say there's like scales of cheating, right? There's yes. like, you yeah. know, tool yeah. assisted speed runs, but there's also you found a glitch in a wall. Yeah. Is that cheating yeah. or is that acceptable? Yep. And, that's what we do in sciences. We find glitches in walls and we exploit yeah. them for yeah. useful purposes. So, no, I, I, I totally agree with that. Mm -hmm. Kudos. I haven't been keeping track. How are you doing on your... Um, I had a rough second match, but I did, you know, with those gophers. Yeah. I, think I got third or something, but I'm doing okay. I'm <laughs> sitting in first place. All right, so, so. You've, you've, you've had over two hours of this. How How is the gaming and chatting <laughs> and <Good>. drinking? <laughs> I, I will say, I think the Tiger Heli... Um, you know, God mode in the middle was really helpful. Yeah. And then I could just like, whatever, shoot stuff and, <laughs> and have to think to, about it. <laughs> as opposed to Portal 2. Yeah, Portal was <laughs> like definitely <laughs> making me think. Yeah, uh, and this is this is fine. You yeah. know, and I, I did the easiest setting. So again, you know, you can judge me, but yeah. it's been a long time. And Oh, no, yeah. no one judges here. I promise you they are not coming here. <laughs> if yeah, they are, yeah. they've made a sore mistake. Yeah, you're in the wrong chat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, I awesome. like it. Yeah. All right, so uh, well, yep, I'll, forgot that, that I'll, one I'll do, I'll do another one of our canned <laughs> questions. Like, what is your airplane conversation? So for those of you not familiar, like mm -hmm. I go on an airplane yep. and they're like, what do you do? And I'm like, I'm a chemist. And their immediate response is I hated chemistry uh -huh. or some uh -huh. kind of yeah, related. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you're obviously, you know, much more tangible type discipline. Like, what is your airplane conversation? No. If they ask <laughs> what you do, what is your 15 second elevator speech? And then what is their response? Yeah, so I, I, I really have started um, starting with the the, I, I study how people figure stuff out, you know, and, and, and especially like, you know, I t try and tap into the, the classic examples of what people think about when they think about learning. So, you know, so again, like when, when you leave the classroom, um, when you walk out of a training, when you log off a webinar, you know, kind of all those things where like, yeah, that's where learning supposedly happens. Um, but then I think a lot of people get the frustration of, okay, that, that was nice and I got good ideas. Um, but then I have to go like do my job <laughs> or I have to go make some part of my life better or more efficient. Mm -hmm. and, and I think a lot of people get the pain um, that comes with that. And, and so I, I usually start with that. Like, yeah, I study, study how people figure stuff out on their own. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then from there, you know, if, if people ask, I'll, I'll start talking about that. Like, well, you know, okay. So like I study a lot of stuff online, social media, um, online communities, uh, networks, you know, all, all those things, like you can get into the weeds, but, but yeah, at the basic level, it's just a, you know, kind of at a fundamental level, like the question is just, what do you do? You know, you, you, you get hired to do a job and that's great. You have a degree, but that's not going to help you on day one, you know, when you walk in. I mean, so before that spiel, do you say you're in academia, you're a professor or? Um, hmm. Cause I mean, Probably. That yeah, the that's, that's a good point. It, yeah, right? that's a good like, point. Does that, yeah. does that change the response? Probably. Or, or yeah. Are you the bad guy immediately <laughs> with some people? And uh, I don't know. I, I don't feel like I give off the, like the, the serious academic vibe, which, you know, I try really hard to, even in my classes, I'm like, come on guys, like we're, we're yeah. let's figure this stuff out together. But do, you, do you go by Brett or do you go by Dr. Um, so again, I, I know all, a lot of this is contextual. Mm -hmm. I'm, um, all graduate students, a lot of doctoral students. So I tell them like, Hey, you're going to be a doctor with me in a couple of years. So yeah. I'm really teaching you to be a colleague, not a, not a student. Yeah. Um, and so because of that, and, but I also work with a lot of international students, a lot of students from Asian countries that won't. and yeah. And so yeah. I tell them like, I'm happy if you call me Brett, if you, if you want to call me doctor, I appreciate that. Um, I'm grateful. Um, I, you know, I, I know other actors, you know, basically I tell them, ask every single instructor you have what they want to be called yeah, yeah. because it really matters based on the identity and the experience of each individual mm -hmm. academic. Yeah. Um, but for me, you know, I'm, yeah, I, I'm steeped in privilege. I'm fine. <laughs> call me whatever. Um, I usually gave a talk yeah. at an education yeah. conference and it was like, I'm a six foot two white male with a booming voice. And I tell jokes <laughs> like yeah. I have I'm, every privilege in the yeah. world in front of a classroom. Call Absolutely. me Ken, yeah. call Ken. <laughs> but, yeah. but ask every other person. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, well, yeah. One of yeah. my favorite things is the same international student scenario where it's just ingrained in them in like year three or four where they're like, Ken, you're full of shit. That is <laughs> right. That's it. like an achievement, like gamification. Will, will you have a factoid related? <laughs> 
Googled <laughs> that. If I had points for a achievement, that would be it. Yes. Ken, you're full of shit. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Uh, so for the students who insist, I say you call me Dr. Brett. Yeah. You don't don't. My last name is way too long. My wife and I combined our last names. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, Dr. Stout Willett is a mouthful that I don't wish upon anybody. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so call me Dr. Brett or call me Brett. It's fine. No, that's a good transition. Yeah. Dr. Brett is like one step away from just bread yeah it's good <laughs> all right yeah. huggy beer had a follow up on our uh previous uh discussion always take a nap after a webinar if you can it helps mm. with the learning is that evidence supported <laughs> i don't know about that but maybe that's <laughs> one of the things that i believe despite what evidence oh, i don't know relax if your brain it, but... and get some retention yeah so yeah and i mean you know again this is anecdotal but i mean things like how did i learn how did i learn you know math like i was trying to write proofs throughout my undergrad and at least for me, I found that just going head on, taking like taking math on, like just beat your head against the wall until you figure it out, like never worked. Mm. You can't just you just can't like grind your way into proving a theory. Yeah. Um, so for me, like I watched movies, movies that I'd watched a zillion times. Um, I'd turn those on, start my math homework, and there's something about being half distracted yeah. that just really worked to like unlock the creative side of my brain and, and just help me get through all those proofs that I had to work on. Yeah. Huggy so, Beer followed up. I thought it helps with the transition short term to long term memory. I'm sure somebody yeah. has studied. Give yourself thing. space. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You have yeah. to relax and yeah. let the, the neurons totally fire and whatnot. Makes sense to me. And I will point out that Brett just got first in 50 CC. Was yes. that mushroom cup? The easiest mushroom cup. Thank you. <laughs> I'm Whatever. A master. We take those victories when we get them. Uh, I'm amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Hamsterlicious, thank you for the bits. You don't have to do that, but let's celebrate uh, Brett and his victories. Cheers. Cheers, <laughs> exactly. Everybody. Portal 2, we gave up. Tiger Hilly, yep, we yep. left. Too many, too Paper boy, brain. we damaged too many windows. But yep, Mario Kart. I'm not talking about, <laughs> not talking about Paper Boy. <laughs> I am I am marginally better than I was when I was six and playing the game. So let's... No worries. You are one emulator and a ten dollar controller from being an expert at <laughs> nice. paper boy. Nice. <laughs> so if you so choose, but hamsterlicious. Thank you again. It's great to see you again. Thank you yeah. for joining us. It's, it's, awesome. it's been a long time. So you're gonna do another one. Uh, do yeah. You? Let's let's do we, we should put up another prediction. Which one do you want yeah. to do? I've, I've uh, neglected. We got these two science-related okay. ones. We did. Uh, when did I learn R? Coffee's boring. Uh, yeah. How about how about um, who who has the most websites? Who hosts uh, most that's, of the internet? That's a fun like. Yeah, I don't know if everybody everyone. knows this. All right. If you're not click, if you're not following us, click the follow button. Get your standard internet units. Make us drink alcohol, which tonight has turned into scotch. Yeah. <laughs> we, we detoured down the Scotch Avenue, which I'm happy to do on every night. Oh man, I emailed one of my colleagues in uh, mechanical engineering and he's like, yeah, I'll play video games. I'm part of the whiskey club in Tallahassee. I'm like, well, shit. Yep, there, yep. <laughs> there goes my Thursday up. morning. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the question here is, a, is an information question. It's about hosting websites. Which company hosts more websites? Is it Amazon or Google? Which may be counterintuitive. One started out as a search engine, the other one started out as a book selling company, and now both host websites. Which one hosts more websites, Amazon or Google? And this goes back to your big data in terms of harvesting oh and gosh. training things Donkey like Kong GPT. Was a <laughs> <laughs> I jumped at the 150cc special yeah, cup I don't Donkey remember. Kong. So, so Toad had the oh highest top speed, is that right? I or thought the Toad was the best turn. Which it is might be always, an acceleration. I think the big ones typically have best top speed. Like, yeah, oh but the least yeah, control is, in this there. This is a bad <laughs> idea. I'm going to be so bad oh. at Donkey Oh my gosh. I had scotch tonight. What are you drinking, Huggy Beer? We, we want to know. We're, we're curious. Yeah, this is a bad choice. So blue label scotch is my, how, how much of a scotch purist are you? I'm like, blended scotch no, or are those are intellectually offensive? Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't judge. And okay. If you offered, but I, would, it's your, I would drink it. You're, you're a single. If I bought something for myself, I would only ever buy a single malt. Like, yeah. But have you had blue label scotch? I have. Yeah. I, I've, drink, I've drunk a lot of Johnny Walker. Yeah. I've had black label. 
I've had Red Label. I've had a lot of Johnny Walker. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's, you know, again, it's fine. It's just a little bit more of my sensitivities. I see. My family's Scottish. And you like the, the yeah. smoky. And I love the smoky. Okay. The, the peaty, smoky. Oh, man. I have another oh scotch on the shelf. Okay, this is, this is a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> this is not going to go. I remember now. I remember as a child. <laughs> this is a bad idea. Okay. That's awesome. Right, we'll go 150, uh, but not on uh, Mario Kart will always have a hold a special place and deserve the awards. I we've had it has to be at least fifteen to twenty percent of my guests have played Mario Kart. Like so if good. you're the age so thirty to fifty, like this hit something on you, either Super Mario or the the the, the N sixty four yep. version. Yeah, twelve year Glenn so Turner is what okay. uh, Huggy Beer is nice. drinking tonight. Cheers, Huggy Beer. Thank you at for joining 12, us. I would say the most classic. Scotch for me is the 12 year Glenlivet. You're like, that's just can't go wrong. It's so good. That's awesome. All right. <laughs> let's go to one of our other classic questions. And this is, um, I, I, oh, wait, I, did we answer that? Did we? I, I, I got distracted with oh my, my God, terrible, we didn't. terrible, terrible show. So everyone said Amazon. <laughs> What's our answer? The answer is Amazon. Amazon. For sure. For sure. knew. It's almost a, they saw a third three. of the internet is hosted on, or a third of websites. Amazon. Traffic is. When did that happen? I don't know. Uh, but yeah, it, it's, it's fairly bit, recent, right? Like Amazon owns so many things that it's a little bit hard to keep up with. So, but Amazon Web Service. My brother actually works for Amazon Web Service. He oh, does wow. a lot of their security for websites. Oof. Yeah, it's, <laughs> he has some stressful days. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, whatever whatever day it was that Facebook went down for like a day or two, um, that was not his team, but he was still on call for all of that. He, he had to try and manage. And all right, I'm going to read a follow-up on that question. Amazon Web Services has 33% of the website market share. That's globally? I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's Microsoft wild. is second with 18. Google is third with 9%. Yeah, it's... It's pretty That's incredible. A shitload was, of the internet. Yeah, just for three companies that really should be doing other stuff. <laughs> they own a lot of, of the internet. Man, like like the US used to have like monopoly policies, right? They went after yeah. the major like oil companies and whatnot, but technology they have not yeah, really they have, gone not after in the same way. anything. No, not at all. Oh my gosh. Which is this just our politicians are so out of touch they don't understand the power of thirty three percent of the internet? Like Yeah. What It's a great question. Yeah. Well, and, and, and then what you can do with that. I mean, that's the thing. Like, you can you know, just control so much or, you know, or, or if your service goes down, you know, it affects so many people. <laughs> Speaking of which, anyone that was following or watching us a week ago, we had tornadoes in Tallahassee. I don't know if you yeah, got a yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. Was, yep. During our stream, we lost connection twice. Oh, <laughs> so it's pretty brutal because we're like still sitting here chatting, playing video games. Yep. The internet is gone. Yep. No internet. <laughs> and all our viewers are gone and then we come back. So I apologize to anyone that was watching. I promise you if we go down tonight, we will be back as soon as possible. We will be on the internet <laughs> till 11 p.m. because yep. Brett has to win the war on drugs as everyone knows. Oh, so. yes. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I forgot about that. That is an inevitable <laughs> preview and i still <laughs> forgot <laughs> no worries oh my gosh stay yeah. safe out there yeah no it was it was interesting I, in the war on mario Kart. i i had a colleague walk down the hall and he's like oh if you walk so, or if you look south of the stadium you could see a tornado from our, oh our building that's which terrifying is, yeah exactly i'm from minnesota so tornadoes aren't too scary but you know hurricanes terrify me more sinkholes even more than yeah, that hurricanes are where are you from originally? I'm from Virginia. Virginia, Mountains okay. Virginia, and then lived in Pennsylvania for 20 years before I moved here. <laughs> yeah. Tropical Geek, thank you for raiding. Uh, the nerds are marching in. We are welcome to have nerds. We are nerds ourselves playing a little bit of Mario Kart. Uh, our guest today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, no, is there's stressful. additional yeah. people here. Yeah. No pressure. Oh, but okay. our guest today is Dr. Brett Stout Willett. He is an expert in, uh, <laughs> he's in the College of Education, and you're in the Department of, whoa, I can't remember the name of it. Uh, the Department is Educational Psychology and Learning Systems, but really, I, I always say instructional systems. And learning technologies that's that's my program and yeah and that's, so if that's you, way more what i do our, <laughs> our department's really broad 
if, if you guys have questions for Brett, he's, he's, he's literally an expert in learning technologies and, uh, and how people learn on social media, including things like Twitch and Twitter and Reddit, things like that. He, he really wants to understand, including processing massive data sets in terms of tweets and how people communicate via those mechanisms. He is an expert in that. Not so much an expert in Mario Kart, but not doing too bad. <laughs> I'm an expert at 50cc Mario Kart. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, what? what's that, like, very amateur? <laughs> oh, my gosh. So, mm. Dr. NPHD, <laughs> whoa, this course in front of people, the stress. Do you feel it? Oh, yeah. Like, I was ask, oh, asking him gosh. earlier what his I made it moment. This is your I did not make it. <laughs> I, did not, I did not make it. Oh, uh, but, yeah, if you guys oh, have no, questions for Brett, he's happy to answer them. Particularly, we've been talking a bunch about, like, chat GPT and the implications in education. Not only that, but online versus in-person learning and the technology implications. Uh, I'm, I'm very curious. In fact... <laughs> that was a great start. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Bill, welcome to the stream. <sighs> Glorious. Oh, you know, sorry. but the thing is, I don't care because I'm like two scotches in. <laughs> exactly. Scotch no, is we're, delicious. We're having so. fun. Even if you guys didn't show up, Brett and I would be uh, here playing this. The, Mar the Mario Kart's not delicious, but uh, scotch is delicious. So, so Brett, your, your, your stream actually really dovetails nicely into our next one in two weeks. <laughs> nice. uh, Ariane Frechild from um, she's from communications. She actually nice. does media psychology and emerging oh, media excellent. entertainment yeah, yeah. and narrative theory in media. And so how, how we right like... On understand narrative and how the implications of what media we perceive that narrative through changes how we imbibe it yeah yeah and so like it's a really fun coincidental cool. back to back so oh, yeah you're, you're all over the thematic <laughs> I, yeah, connections man honestly the answer is i email about 40 people and see who can come in and, and nice. this coincidentally worked out really awesome all right uh shakespeare wants to know will G chat gpt replace students <laughs> no <laughs> And I, and I say no so quickly because, I mean, people always have to learn. So, you know, in terms of like the labor that, that students do, I think I think the labor of students will look drastically different. That, you know, the exercises of students will be different. But, but yeah, we're, we're all students. I mean, Ken and I are still students. We have, you know, we have PhDs, but we're, we're still learning. Yep. Um, so, you know, I, yeah, I, I don't think we're, we ever stop being students. So in that way, like, you know, unless ChatGPT um, replaces humans, then... But otherwise, I think as long as they're humans, they're going to be their students. <laughs> but, but, the, but the tasks, uh, we talked about this a little bit earlier, but yeah, the, the, the work, the labor of learning, I think is going to look different. I do think that that will be true. In the same way that math looks different than it did before calculators. And um, yeah, I mean... So uh, programming looked different before Google. <laughs> I mean, th this is this is an age-old problem, right? Like, yeah, yeah. And we we have this in the sciences where someone invents a new instrument, right? And that instrument is a home-built whatever jank thing they you know bought the parts and assembled them together until it becomes a commercial product that people can buy, yep. and then it becomes a user-friendly commercial product, and now everyone in the world runs an NMR, which is called nuclear magnetic resonance, and you can do. Nice. You know, oh like a resonance <laughs> pulse to a system and you can know which atoms are coupled to each other. And I can buy this system and run this myself very simply nice. without knowing how to build the instrument. Yeah, that's awesome. But like I've lost the ability to build it. And so there's sure. there's it's, there's always going to be a generation of purists that says you don't really know how that works. Yep. But the answer is I don't care because yep. it answers my yep. question and steps me forward in yep. knowledge. Do I need to know how it works? Maybe. But. Is it worth the time to do that when I can be broadening my, you know, knowledge set by using that tool to further my technology and my knowledge? So I, anyway, I'll get off uh, my high have, horse. <laughs> have, you done, have you done any reading on uh, moral panic? No, I'm I'm not familiar. That's yeah. Intriguing. So so this term moral panic. If anybody wants to look it up, um, there's like some pretty interesting stuff written on it. Um, but basically, people attribute the original moral panic to I think it's Socrates. Um, but basically, he's like, the invention of writing. He said it was going to ruin <laughs> our, how we think. Because when you write stuff down, you don't have to remember it. And, it, you know, and if you think, like, you know, back in the day, like, you know, all those orators, all those Greek um, orators, you know, they had to remember everything. All mm. those speeches. Oh. So close to third. Anyway, but, you know, so so this is going back thousands of years, this idea that, 
some new technology, some new new invention is going to like fundamentally choose and make humanity worse. Mm -hmm. And so going way back, um, you know, way, 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 way back. Um, and so again, does it change? Do we do we think differently because we write? Yeah, sure we do. Are we dumber than the ancient Greeks? Probably not. Mm, absolutely we not. Have so many more things that we're, we're taking into consideration. Yeah. Uh, shake a spear. Have you seen math before we adopted Indian slash Arabic Seriously, numerals? Yeah. Can you imagine doing do... math with Roman numerals? But even then they were like, oh no, 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 you have to use Roman numerals. Yeah, yeah because that's the, that's, purest, that's right? the way it that's is. The way we yeah, did it. Yeah, yeah. No. Oh my like, gosh. That's one of the original moral panics, I'm sure. Yep. Yeah. 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 So yeah, it's like, but it's like every generation has some, and and partly like, I mean, so to be fair, we do have uh, far more. I mean, technology advances so fast right now that we do have a lot of things, you know, that are just constantly coming up and and are new. And so, I mean, we're getting like instead of like one a generation, we're getting <laughs> one a year or, or one a week or something like that. Um, so you know, so it is. The, the the pace of it is is potentially different but it's you know it's the same problem that we've had you know basically like people this is harder than i remember it's the ice <laughs> like level. i said i learned how to drive on the snow from the mario kart <laughs> so, dr n phd i apologize my screen labs is not doing automatic shout outs but thank you for the raid again uh, we always love love nerds rating our stream and talking science you guys should check oh, out yeah. check out dr um n phd uh we are happy to support all streamers of science education related things um so again thank you for joining us thank you all for for joining us tonight as as brett attempts to two scotches in like <laughs> mario kart while talking about you know ai learning moral um what was it called moral Moral, moral panic, panic is, the, yeah, is the phrase. The great. What about so, the children? You know, it's right? about games. It's about social media. You know, it's like I mean, there's just so many things that that people freak out about. You know, because like yeah, it was. It, I mean, they're like all the books. Like uh, Nicholas Carr wrote The Shallows. You know, like so basically, like Google is going to make us dumb, and mm -hmm. the internet makes us dumb. Um, <laughs> it's partially right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, in some ways, it's true. But on the other hand, like we. We have to figure out, like we have to, you know, so there's like things like digital literacy, media literacy, news literacy, like all these things that are, you know, like life is complex right now. And so, yeah. I mean, it's kind of amazing that, are you screenshotting me? <laughs> is that what? that yellow, I don't know, I have a yellow um, square. I don't no, know. No, it's just like. Did you turn that on? I didn't I don't that. know. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> This is probably, that knows Mario Kart help, Brett. This is probably like way late in the game, but is there a break I did not button do that. in this game? You, you probably have some kind of map. Is there a way to break in you. this game? Because I am like, <laughs> the snow is really killing a me. Fancy UI setting. Oh end. my gosh. Oh, yeah. oh my yeah. god. I am. <laughs> it's gone downhill. Oh, I, don't, I don't know what I did. Honestly, it's it's probably time for NARC anyway. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sure. Shakespeare, if you if you were sharing a link, I have Nightbot that turns off all links, so you can. <laughs> chat me directly or message me via, via twitter um, but you guys that joined us joined us at the right time because it is are you ready for this it's getting bleak yeah <laughs> are you ready to close the night with narc oh yeah i'm ready i'm All ready right. to get out of this ladies and gentlemen those of you familiar with the stream we have I'm a, the a for a reason no more snow. <laughs> no more snow all right ladies and gentlemen we are going to do it we close every single ask a scientist gaming stream where i force my guests to play narc which is a bargain bin game for the nintendo entertainment system um <laughs> I literally bargain you remember blockbuster when you walk oh, out yeah. and there's like it's a dollar games yep. for, for super cheap I love it well this narc is one of those games and so what we do is force our guests to play it not only that we force them to play it under the clock because they are competing against all their colleagues so now it is time to represent the department of education uh -oh. or the, the college of education <laughs> are you ready for this yeah uh, yeah let's all do right. it so your timer do you want to see it or do you not want to see it uh what am i aiming for what's my goal so i think the fastest guest other than me is about 17 minutes okay and the lowest oh, is somewhere about 40 minutes so you have a dynamic <laughs> 17 range. to 40 all right so i'm aiming for better than 40. <laughs> exactly <laughs> thanks ninja physics yep all right. good luck have fun you ready i'm ready all right go ahead okay i hit start when you gain control of the character okay all right uh, 
There you go. You Look are off me. to the races. I am chilling. Walk right, find a door. Don't kill anyone. Just go. <laughs> that is if I goal. walk backwards, is it faster? No, it's slow. Not like Porter. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. Jumping backwards doesn't help you. Squatting doesn't help you. Okay. Uh, there's the door with oh, the arrow. Yep. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There. All right, let's get back to a question. Huggy Bear wants to know, do you think yeah. AI will get to the point where they can personalize teaching? Yes, I do. That's awesome. What does that look like in an ideal scenario? Yeah, so, uh, I mean, I think it still depends a little bit on, you know, again, motivation and... Uh, get away from me, dogs. Um, I think it depends a little bit on motivation and that self-directed aspect. But um, I think if you if you have an idea of what you're trying to accomplish, um, I think even now, like you can, you could ask ChatGPT to like give you more information on specific topics. It's going to give you B plus answers on stuff. So it's sort of like, I mean, that's enough to get yourself going anyway. And Dr. N, PhD, and uh, Shakespeare, thank you for the follow. I uh, apologize, I missed that. A lot of traffic, and we were. I'm not going to lie, I'm fairly drunk at this point, so <laughs> I'm trying to keep track of many moving boxes at the same time. It's a, you have a lot of, you have a very complicated setup, so it's very impressive. Well, I, mean, that, I think I think your game of you, like, trying to keep the right screen up uh, is probably just as difficult as whatever I'm playing. Well, I mean, the, the hard part about this is, like, since I don't stream every night, it's one of those practice things, right? So, like, every two weeks, it's, it's uh, yeah. we've gotten fairly good at it, but... Yeah. Yeah, for those of you not familiar with the stream, it's every other week, and I try to have a guest on every other week. And so, yeah, I email my colleagues at FSU, and I say, hey, do you want to play video games, drink alcohol, and talk science? Yep. And you'd be surprised how often people uh, basically say Basically, yes everybody this. says yes. Yeah, yeah. Like, I was, why would you not? <laughs> my email to Brett was like, do you want to come to my house and play games? And he said yes. 8 so, to 11 o'clock. <laughs> something about him more than me. Yes, <laughs> that anyway. is it. Yep, that's my fault. Oh. Uh, Cuddle Puppy, welcome back to the stream. I forgot you were doing three streams in it three It says weeks. exit. Why is it not yeah. exiting? Oh, so you got to shoot the, the guys in black coats with bullets at relatively close range, and one of them will drop a blue card. Oh, my gosh. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, yeah. There's there's like a, the, the, there's a See, range. I'm going to figure this out on, on the speed run, this is the worst part of the game because it's completely RNG. I don't know if you're familiar with that term, random, random number generator. Yeah, yep. curse the RNG. So, so you have to shoot them with a bullet. How do I know when I get it? The whatever? Uh, you'll see it on the ground, and okay. you'll, you'll be able to pick it up. But, so i got to go find these guys. Cuddle Puppy, walk. welcome back to the stream. Yes, we're doing three streams in three weeks. Last week was particularly special. We had Johan Simone from University of Southern Mississippi. We had a guest speaker at FSU, and I, I knew oh, him, nice. and I was like... So Do basically, when I have people visiting, Absolutely. I need to tell them to come hang yes. out with you. Yes, no, send me an email and say, I have someone, oh, there you go, blue okay. card. There you go. So press the, the key card slot thing, and okay. then go through the door. All right. awesome. So yeah, if you have a guest speaker that you think would have fun doing yep. this, nice. let's do it. All right. And the best part is, Johan's sitting here drinking bourbon the night before he has to give a seminar in our department. I love it. <laughs> so. And then everybody's like, why is this guy, this guy is better on the videos. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I love it. But Cuddle Puppy, welcome back. Three weeks in a row. It's a pleasure to have you. Anyone who deals with AI knows about RNG. Yes. Do you think it's oh the gosh. gaming or it's the AI that lets you know about RNG? Oh, it's gaming 100% for me. Yeah. You know, because, like, you know, I'd be, I mean, farming, right? Like, I'd be farming on some MMORPG and, like, I'd spend. So you can jump in the car. Okay. I'd spend. But you want to stay on the bottom as far as you can because you're going to get blown up by oh, a wall or a bomb. Oh, there we go. Yep. No, you had it. Uh, press down. Hit boxes. There you go. Nice. But then there's this. And oh, the, yep. There unless we go. you memorize oh, okay. the pattern, yeah. you don't have a choice on this. I apologize. <laughs> cool. <laughs> that was fun while it lasted. It's the longest level right. in the game. Don't step on the blinky things, huh? <laughs> <laughs> that was good instinct. I'm, a, I'm an expert game. <laughs> was that AI or gaming that told you that? <laughs> it's a hard one experience. <laughs> All right. Huggy Beer. I just like the idea of AI teaching learning the best way you learn, writing visuals interactive to give you the best chance at success. Yep. So I'll, I'll follow yep. up with this a question uh, in terms of like, what is the, the, the earth is flat versus anti-vax equivalent of your field? <laughs> like the, what is the, the misconception that everyone does that, uh, that's just uh, fundamentally wrong? How do I get through this? I can't figure out how to get by this thing. Uh, jump, tab, oh, E. Okay. Oh, there you go. That was weird. I don't even know what that thing was. Um, so the reason so, I bring this up yep. is is is, is uh, um, uh, 
So I, I feel like we have lots. I, so I'll name two. So, so we had Jenny Root as our guest at one <laughs> uh-huh. point, and her uh-huh. big one was learning styles are a myth. Ah, uh, that's what I was so, going to say. So okay. she, she might have I'll hijacked it already. No, I'll do the second one. I'll do the second one. Um, so the second one is, so learning styles are a myth. So yes, and we get that a lot in instructional systems. Instructional I mean, that's just universally accepted in the education yeah, community. So learning frustrating. styles are made up. So Except what, for everybody who actually is practices. <laughs> they all buy it, and every every time you get teacher professional development, they they all talk about learning styles. It's so and but like it, every handout my kids get, it's all learning styles. Yeah, so it's it's definitively been established. This is bullshit. Yes. Oh, yeah. oh yeah, you yeah. need to learn 100%. through many different. Anybody who studied it. Okay. Yeah, but it's so catchy because everybody wants to think like, oh, but I love like learning in this way, and so you know, and and the problem is that the the real way that we learn is adjacent enough that it gets confusing mm-hmm. so multiple modalities is is a is a better oh, way in the car it's okay. faster this one stay know, on the bottom I'll, I'll, you're gonna get blown up but it's faster okay. to get blown up okay you can go um, up a little and it'll buy you some time okay but there's a very particular oh, pattern yeah, no, <laughs> you have yep. to memorize all right and you don't know because it's your first time yep, playing through fine. <laughs> um but yeah so learning styles are a myth the other one that that you know i get um again thinking about self-directed learning thinking about um the internet is digital natives mm-hmm. so digital natives are 100 percent also a myth <laughs> there's one guy who wrote in the 2000s you know and coined this term and then it's stuck like people so, just so, love the idea so what is what is digital natives so basically it's the idea that young people are good with that oh just intrinsically yeah, they, just they're like, born they're into just, it it's just like really good at it because they're young and they grew up with it or something and old people are bad at it yeah. <laughs> um, and so the, the so problem with it is... Stay on the bottom, the rest okay. of the level. Okay. So the problem with with digital natives is... It's going to take me 17 minutes to <laughs> get in the car. Um, the problem with digital natives is that... Um, I feel like anybody who's taught undergrads knows that actually young people are kind of awful with social media. Um, so yes, they use it all the time. But they that doesn't mean they're they're wise about it. That doesn't mean they're they're proficient at it. It just means they have exposure. Mm-hmm. Um, and at the same time, there's some some people that are a little bit older that have taken the time to get good at it um, and and actually have quite a, a good bit of digital literacy or media literacy or you know or skill you know in navigating things. And and you know so the idea that like you're just inherently good because you're a certain age or you grew up with a certain technology is just super problem so i've seen discussions recently so you don't have this key card yet you're going to go all the way to the right into the last door and you're going to pick up a uh, silver key card okay uh that door right there okay oh okay and you're going to go through the door but don't press up after you go through the door or you'll go through it again so go to the right you'll see a silver key card so so i've 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 had one of these discussions recently and it was it was about this idea that they're born into technology and therefore they know it but there's a fundamental uh, difference in the technology they use go back like a lot no nope, go to the right and the door on the right the technology they use is a very intuitive like touch screen that has yeah. apps and whatnot but yeah. not like a folder structure and so they don't necessarily know how to navigate like traditional computer interface so there's your key card Looks on. Oh yeah, there it is. It's dead, so so yep. get in the slot, get in the door. You're good. Cool. And so, so the, the, they're growing up using touchscreens that have intuitive software, but not necessarily could use a mouse and drag files and like yep. those skill sets yep. that they need. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And then, and, and again, like to be wise about it all, like uh, you know, and critical. Um, it's just, yeah. Um, you know, just because you watch. TikTok all the time or use social media all the time doesn't mean you so you're going to go left on this level <laughs> sorry i'm interrupting our dialogue because this <laughs> yeah. is a speed run this is important but ninja <laughs> physics we might have seen those same reddit thread i imagine it was the same discussion but it is like even my daughter's like learning how to use a mouse versus yep, a touch pad versus a touch Uh-oh. screen and so you're going to use bullets to shoot the um uh the the Lights. rambo looking guys oh, okay. and so hold a and you're going to shoot that guy and then eventually rambo shows up bullets instead of rockets for some reason they don't drop cards so okay. hold a that'll give you the bullets so go back left and shoot rocket the bullets there you go green card all right through nice. the door perfect 
But yeah, that was probably the exact same thread. And I'm yeah. very curious yeah. how this manifests because students yeah. enter the job market or grad school yeah. and don't know how to yeah. use the yeah. software. And again, I, it, it, it's the it's the place of education. Like our role is to help, right? So yeah. it's not it's not to blame them. It's like it's not like I knew how to do this stuff as a kid. But again, that's why it's a myth because like it's not like you're born knowing just because you were born in a certain year. Like we all need to learn. We all need to and and practice, um, and and the skills of. You know, disinformation, misinformation, um, all of it. Like it's all getting more complex and and, and more. Yeah. I mean, so we all need to keep leveling up. N Ninja physics, Google Foo is the exact right descriptor. I remember. I don't know if you remember this, but like late nineties, <laughs> early two thousands, where like my friends and I would come up with a question, and you could pursue an answer, but it was like, how many keywords do you need to put into Google to get to that answer? Because that's an yes. additional skill set. Yep. Like Google Foo is what you know yep brackets yep. and or your nors you like yep well again we, we and we talked earlier about how i learned how to code how i still learn how to code mm -hmm. i know how to google the right terms like that as much as like actual the right terms to look up and in, in uh in, or actual functions to use and remembering those functions um you know and as you know again last last monday night i taught myself a little bit of python to get, nothing to be dangerous um as much as i did all of that like it's it's really just about learning how to how to look up mm -hmm. you know and, and know like i know enough to know i'm trying to do this here are some keywords that, that will help me find the right answer like a good 30 percent of my paper writing is that process right i need yep. a particular reference to support something i know to be true but it's actually you yep. need to support it with yep. a reference absolutely it is, yeah. it is all that cuddle puppy i was talking to a computer science major recently and at one point i said i bet you use the run command instead of double clicking the dot exe icon and he tried very hard to <laughs> that course of action that's amazing, that's amazing. <laughs> i love it oh, oh man <laughs> that's amazing. All right, Cuddle Puppy had a question. Uh, just got here. What does networked learning online mean? Yeah, I, I had to truncate your expertise. Uh, I apologize yeah, yeah, yeah. if fair, I did a disservice. So yeah, so it, it basically means you're learning with other people. You're you're connecting. So um, I think it's a it's a subset of like self directed learning where you're figuring stuff out on your own. Um, but it's, it's doing that in conjunction with connecting with other people. For example, if you're tuning into ask a scientist gaming to talk about education <laughs> learning while watching Brett play this is network, this is learning. network yep. learning, you are, online. you are not just Googling stuff on your own. You're not just yeah. reading a book. You are, you're trying to figure it out, um, it, with other people. Yeah. So, and anyway, there, there's one, one definition of, of networks that I like. That's basically like, um, networks of people so who who you access um the the types of resources that you're passing around um and then the spaces that you're going in so in this case the space is twitch the who is ken and i so, so a pause you have to shoot the wheelchair guy with a oh, rocket okay so okay. tapping a sorry i for every other week i have to utter the sentence you have to shoot the, the wheelchair, wheelchair guy, guy with, with a rocket, rocket. so I should just put that at the top of the monitor exactly <laughs> ask a scientist game and then i won't make any sense until i get to this point. expert science and shoot the guy in the wheelchair yeah <laughs> so go uh, go right okay. go up here again right, great <laughs> sorry I'm sorry to interrupt. I, I don't your like time. The, I don't like the dogs. Yeah. Basically, what was my top time? Forty minutes. I got. I got yeah, yeah, forty yeah. minutes. I feel really good. confident that I'm so going to. I think. I, I think the only education colleague I've had is Jenny Root. Do you want to know her? Time? Yeah, I do want to know. I because I know Jenny. I want to beat Jenny for sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Because I'll, I'll see her and I'll, I can. I want bragging rights basically. <laughs> All right. Where'd the wheelchair guy go? Oh God, cuddle is puppy. Why would you do that? There's a recent police brutality incident that makes this level a little awkward. Oh no. Ah, oh gosh. Guy without legs that got shot oh, to gosh. death. Oh gosh. Cuddle puppy. Uh, let's not talk about real events. So. Yeah, exactly. Oh man. Yeah, I'm That's too many scotches stream. in to detour this discussion. We live too far in the middle of Florida to talk about things like that. <laughs> Sorry, that was too real. <clears throat> oh, there he is. Come back here. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, why? He's really hard. A little to hit. bit too long on the rocket. Maybe hit it less hard. Yeah, don't just jam it down. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so 
My brother and I deconstructed this game, and it's seven frames is what you get for a push. So seven sixtieths of a second is okay. your tap button. Wow, you guys, yeah, Max Min this to you. So this started, uh, Cuddle Puppy, do you want to reveal it, or should I? Huh. A multitasker falls by again, yes. No, Uncle Bill, it's always a pleasure to have you here. Um, we always appreciate... Um, uh, educational streamers of any kind. Uncle Bill is one of the founders of the Knowledge Fellowship, which compiles a whole bunch of educational streamers together in one Discord server, so you guys should check it out. There's a link right there to the Knowledge Fellowship. Check that out. Uh, <laughs> not sure what I'm revealing, but I'm gay. <laughs> Cuddle Puppy, where did that come from? <laughs> Huggy, Be Huggy Beard Redeemed, request a factoid. Oh, uh -oh. Pen, do we have any? Do we have any left? I have no idea. It's on your sheet. <laughs> That's on my sheet. All right. Uh, Gamification does not actually involve games. That's yes. a fun one. I'm okay. curious about this. All right. So, so okay. Yeah, this is good. I, this is a rant of mine as much as a fact to it. All right. So you probably have heard of gamification. It's like, it's all the rage at different times in, yeah. in education. So the idea of, so as a guy named Ian Bogos, I encourage you read whatever blog posts and things that Ian Bogos writes, but, um, I'm okay. I was overconfident in my 40 minute prediction. <laughs> I might not ever finish this. You're fine. Just wait for him to come back. Um, but anyway, so Ian Bogos, reading Ian Bogos, but he redefines gamification as pointsification. And so the idea of gamification is that you take some element of a game that is beloved and probably like actually awesome and you strip it out of context. And then you're like, this will make learning fun <laughs> or whatever process fun. And um, he, he called it chocolate covered broccoli. So it's like, oh, chocolate's good. Broccoli is necessary. So what if you combine the two? Well, it's actually worse to have chocolate covered broccoli than, you know, than just broccoli or just chocolate. Like it, it ruins both things, actually. Um, and so... So anyway, so the idea of taking some element out of context of games, like a point system, and sticking it into a learning context or like a, an incentive to use a credit card or, or whatever. Um, oh, I think I got it. Um, you did. It, it kind of ruins the experience. So like a credit card company can be like, hey, like gamified, you All know, right. like collect our I'm, stuff. I'm going to cut you off briefly because oh, okay. I'm going to explain okay. how to beat this boss. <laughs> um, right. Jenny got it in 27 minutes and nine seconds. I got 10 minutes. You have right. 10 minutes right. to beat this boss. <laughs> I'm confident you can do that. Okay. Yes, Ninja Physics. All right, you're going to go to the top of the board. Yep. And you're going to jump and rocket him in the hat. Okay. Oh, you, you can uh, tell you can tell Brett's a gamer because at no point was he like, "What the hell is that?" Because it's just like that exists in the gaming yeah, world. Yeah, and, that's yeah, that and you sense. just did it. All right, walk away, and you're gonna go down a little bit and turn back and rocket him oh, in the face. Okay. So tapping A, you may have gotten the fastest rocket hat shot in <laughs> our narc history. Nice. I gotta be good at something. <laughs> exactly. I'll, the, I'll take the rocket. I don't know. We'll take this victory tonight. Oh my gosh! All right. Yeah, he's kind of. Destroying yeah. me right so now. So you're going to walk uh, walk away from him, get some distance. I, you can even be at the top of the screen uh, and avoid his whatever those are. Why is it let me jump? Jump. Uh, jump. You don't need to jump. You just oh, need to okay. rocket him. So okay. just tap A and get a rocket. All right. All right. So sorry, going back to the gamification, it's mostly just hitting the same exploitive addictions that gambling hits. Yeah. Is that, so, is that a yes. critique? Yeah, that's absolutely fair. Um, and and so it's things like all right so now you're gonna walk away sorry and you're gonna hit him with bullets okay. but you can't do it at the top of the screen you have okay. to do it okay. at like middle ground okay so. so so it's things like because yeah we we love seeing things accumulate um we love progress and but it's taking like part of what makes a game great is is the the space to try things so you have plenty of room to go to yeah. the right uh. Yeah, he's like all over. Okay. <laughs> While you're answering um, questions, I'm trying to coach you, and I apologize. Yeah. Okay, so. <laughs> yeah, and so you move up and down on the Y axis and just hope you hit some vertebrae. The hitboxes are terrible. I apologize. <laughs> it's okay. You didn't make this game in 1980, whatever. <laughs> no, it was, it was programmed and delivered by Nancy Reagan. <laughs> just kidding. None of that's true. <laughs> I say that joke every week. I apologize. Oh, okay. Get away from me. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah. So, so like there, there are absolutely elements of, of games that, that, you know, can tap into like addictive qualities. Um, 
but stripping them out of like you know the the well-conceived like um, system and you know uh, set of rules, the safe environment to try stuff and fail without consequence. So don't go back that way. Turn around, move up yeah. and down. The hitboxes are terrible. I don't. I know I how this works, but I can't. Is it coach the blood? It. Like the blood spider is telling me that I'm hitting it? No, it's it's it's. So you have to go down to the middle. It's it, there's a weird timing on the hitbox. His okay. head has to go down at the time, and you're uh, in position. Okay. It's really messed up. This is a terrible game, and I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I need to bait him over, and then maybe jump up. <laughs> Cuddle puppy. Nancy Reagan was famous for something in California, but it wasn't programming. <laughs> Have you, have you heard this? No. Oh, no. Cuddle Puppy, I'll let you reveal that and he can read that. I'm not going to speak that on stream because <laughs> she she married an actor. Sure. Okay. She may have been a groupie. Oh, there okay, we go. I got, I got one. No, you got several. This is the easy part. Last two, if you get to the right, go get right. some distance, turn back, nice. go right, get to the door. Okay, okay, okay. We're going to close out gamification because it is Ooh. only 10.52 and we have yeah. eight minutes. Nice. Yeah. But anyway, so, so gamification is basically ruining um, the parts of game. Like it's stripping games apart in, in a way that, you know, makes makes them not. Speedrun. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I want the goal, but I want the yeah, goal. No, no. <laughs> no, you have one goal right now. All Get right. To time, end. time, not gold. No. Time. <laughs> this is bragging rights to yeah. Jenny. Like, yes. You have yeah, there we go. 2109. All right. That's pretty good. That puts okay, you in okay. the top. One, two, top three, 50. four, five. <laughs> puts you in the top seven. Okay. Out of, okay. Out of the 37 seven. something people have done this. So you, okay. you have thoroughly defeated Jenny Root, who did it in nice. 2709, right. who did it in 2109. Let's Cheers. close that thought since I yeah. interrupted you so many times. Gamification, <laughs> yep. good or bad? <laughs> no, I. So I, I'm, I'm, I love games for learning. I'm thoroughly against uh, gamification. I, I just think like pulling out one random element of games. So like the idea of a big boss or point system. It just, I don't know. I, I, I think it, it kind of ruins what's great about games, and it's that's the system, right? Like so, it's it's a, a safe space to try things, to explore. Uh, to fail, um, yeah. I think I think games as a system are good, not games as as a points uh, scoreboard or you know or, or that kind of thing. So, yep. So generally, I I am pretty critical of, of gamification. I think gamification absolutely is not games. So. If, if anyone has suggestions on people we should raid, you should throw them in now because we're going to take the six minutes just to shoot the shit and finish our drinks because it's not quite 11 o'clock yet. Yep. You beat the game too fast. Oh, you beat it six minutes sorry. early. So we, so we could throw up Paperboy too if you want to give that a sure. shot. I've never done Paperboy Do you want sure. it? Let, let's yeah. do it. We usually yeah. close with NARC, but you were too fast. Nice. So yeah, let's, let's open some Paperboy too. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> let's play. <laughs> Ninja I don't know anything. Yeah. Ninja Physics Redeem, take a drink. Nice. So, so look at look Cheers. at this progress though on NES games. You can be paper boy or paper girl. Nice. One player, okay. two player. So love it. But chocolate, pro <laughs> chocolate <laughs> covered broccoli. Yeah, Ian Bogas. Read some Ian Bogas. He's that's a fun. Be some paper girl. But Ninja that's Physics, that. thank you for making us drink. Thank you again for yep. joining thank us. Thank you. It's been a while. Yeah, I appreciate all the here. all the questions and interactions. It's been great. No, it, it, it's yeah. been a lot of fun. Appreciate you. But all. back to the idea of gamification, and this is something I've said on many streams, and you can debunk oh. me right now. But like, <laughs> I, I I propose this idea of like gamification of grad school. Like there are achievement thresholds that you'd like to hit, like you know, passing classes and passing quals. Sure. Those are obvious sure. ones, but also like arguing with your advisor and being correct right and there's certain milestones you mm -hmm. reach in grad school that it would be awesome to have those like documented and uh, the question is like is that just a, a hoop to jump through or does that encourage development like what is your can it be done well i guess would be my question i suppose so i mean like why not make it like a full game though mm -hmm. instead of just like uh because i think the gamification of grad school is like literally great <laughs> you know in, in a transcript like you know i mean that's all most gamification is it's just a point system yeah so but yeah if you if you were to be a little bit more creative and figure out again um what's what's the system um and, and I, I like that like to, to kind of like you know create like a 
and, and badges are interesting. So, but to like do badges, not just for milestones, but for some other things like, yes, you stood up to your, you know, maybe it's a t-shirt, you get a t-shirt, like I stood up to my <laughs> advisor and yeah. you know, I was right, you know, or like, Hey, I corrected somebody in a, in a brown bag and, you know, um, or I, I, I asked my first yeah. question at a seminar, like Absolutely. that is a, like, Absolutely. I, I, I like the idea of rewards, but maybe I'm not thinking about it correctly. No, I think I think rewards are good and, and, and we're motivated by rewards and that's okay. Um, but it's the what what are your chances for a redo? So like as I as I'm terrible at this game, <laughs> in the end it doesn't matter. If I'm terrible at grad school though, there are consequences. Yeah, and so like if you actually life. want to talk about a game, then you have to figure out like how do we protect and allow that experimentation because I think there there could be some really creative ways to get through, say, a PhD. There'd be some really creative ways to like get become an expert, mm -hmm. to become a doctor in, in a topic. Um, not all of it has to be the path that we've always done, um, you know. And I think it would probably help all of us actually if if it wasn't the way that we've always done it. Uh, but we need we need to protect some of that. Like we need to, not just to say like, oh, take risk, it's fine, it's gamified, you know. And then as soon as like they they screw up, it's like, well, you're out of the program because <laughs> like that's not a game. Like that that's just that's just point yeah. and, and consequences. So somehow you know the things that are great about games, the the exploration, um, the the pushing the boundaries, the looking for the cheat codes, the looking for uh, the bugs, all of that stuff, mm -hmm. you know, that makes it really fun and interesting. I think somehow capturing that, not just the points. Yeah. And, and that's the, that's the issue is like when it's only about the points and you're screwed, if you don't measure up mm -hmm. like that, that's the issue. Cause then it's, it's not game like at all. Yeah. I mean, so you like the positive reinforcement aspect of it, but if there's, yeah. there's a yeah. cost associated with yeah. paper girl fired. <laughs> that's fair. I accept that. You know, that. It was worth a try. Yeah. Yeah. No. All right. Again, if anyone has suggestions as who we should raid it's late on a Wednesday night, I don't know who's on, but if you guys have suggestions, uncle Bill, you know, a whole lot of people online. If you have suggestions, we'd be happy to take them. Do you want to take one more try? You have two sure. minutes before yeah, 11. I'm game. I'll Let's probably die it. in about two minutes. I don't so. have cheat codes for this one. So you're on your own. <laughs> that's, perfect. Yeah, that's perfect. I don't have many good targets at the moment. Uh, Moo Hoodles is live, but planning to shut down. Uh, Go comment watching soon. That's fun. I love that the the fact that somebody's stopping their stream because they're gonna go watch comments. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, no, that's absolutely I love amazing. <laughs> Cuddle puppy. In spite of the brutality of this paper route, I support firing the paper girl because she was doing BMX <laughs> tricks instead of just dropping off the damn paper. I was pretty decent at the BMX <laughs> tricks. I have no idea about dropping off paper. But I, I hit those ramps pretty well. well. See, the problem is you've gamified paper delivery yes, <laughs> and yes, not yep. actually incentivized Fair. the job. <laughs> Fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I made it too fun. I, I did uh, not perform my job correctly. <laughs> Mr. Scoot is playing some retro games. That's fun. Nice. We don't always have to raid like science streamers. We can go after uh, nice. Love Mr. Scoot. Retro. What are they playing? History talk. All right. Talk about history of technology or something. Ooh, history of gamification. <laughs> Let's do it. I don't. Are you familiar with this? The the idea of raiding? No. But it's basically you bring your viewers to someone else and it's kind of social. So, okay. so, so, so you just kind of chat them up. Yeah. Dr. D and D rated us earlier and brought his people. Uh, over okay. Okay. We're doing the same. Oh, I appreciate so, that. So Sophia quest playing some, playing a little bit. I don't bit think I've of... hit a single target, but <laughs> you have way. Uh, so, so again, like in terms of exploring, like you have way more lateral mobility in this game. So it's kind of fun, even though like I am objectively terrible at it. Like you can move left to right in very different ways. Yeah. All right, we've hit the eleven o'clock mark. All right. Have you you've had enough? Sure. <laughs> I, I'm not sure I'm gonna get better. Oh, I got one in the mailbox. All right. We'll close on that. Yep. Yep. All close right. on that. All yep. right, ladies Success. and gentlemen. <laughs> thank you again for joining us at Ask a Scientist Gaming. Mediocre gameplay expert science, Brett. It's been a pleasure to have you. It's, it's been thank, a lot of fun you. discussing. Yep. Thank you for making me bust out the scotch. I will regret it tomorrow, but tonight it is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> thank you all for joining us. The audience is what makes this a lot of fun. You ask yes. questions and bring talking yep. points that really. I mean, lead us down paths that we are happy to discuss. And so we're happy to play games, video games, yep. uh, talk science, but uh, Thanks, science everyone. is always amazing. So yep. um, 
Uh, Brett, any parting words for the audience? No, just go go play real games. Games are amazing. Uh, live life like a game, not not a scoreboard. So yeah, go enjoy. <laughs> Absolutely, Brett. Thank you again for yep. reliving some of your childhood, plus playing some yep. Portal, which this is has a lot been of fun. awesome. And yep. winning the war on drugs and winning the uh, Mario Kart 50 CC Mario or <laughs> yes. the Mushroom Cup race. Congratulations <laughs> on that. Thank you. Um, thank you. All right. Thank you all for joining us. In two weeks, we're going to have Dr. Arian. F- uh, Fretcher, uh, media psychologist, emerging media entertainment, narrative theory in media. She's a communications professor at FSU and studies how these new emerging technologies relate to how we interpret media and how we imbibe that media and how it influences our, um, what did you describe it as? It was like uh, identity, um, yes. social identity yep. and yep. things like yep. that. Um, so it really piggybacks really well on this, this particular stream. And so, yep. uh, That's thank exciting. you very much for joining us. Uh, stick around. We're going to raid another educational scientist. <laughs> of some kind Love it. Um, but until we cross paths again thank you all uh, we'll see you in two weeks